Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're all well. Uh, slightly different view this evening, but uh, I think we're all good to go. So um, the view will become clear in a minute. I'm going to move things around, but I just want to um, show you a couple of bits before we get started. So if you're in the chat, do say hello. Otherwise, I'm just going to get cracking. So uh, yeah, so I'm using my um, actual LCD screen tonight. Um, I have been using the uh, television, which actually the web camera is sat on at the moment. Uh, for the past uh, few sort of, um, well, weeks, I guess, really, you're doing some of my pixel art, but um, this evening I just fancied using it with a bit more fidelity, shall we say so, and also to make some better use of the overscan. So, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed tonight's stream. I am going to condense this down into uh, an instruction video as well, which I hope to get out on the channel at some point this week with a bit of luck, but we'll just see how it goes, so... So yeah, so um, yeah, um, so what we're going to do tonight is uh, we're going to do some uh, pick start from scratch, which we've done plenty of times before on the stream. So I'm just going to try and make it a bit more pointed as to the advice. So um, in terms of what what works well, so uh, and then we'll just take it through to shading. Now I'm actually going to do some shading this evening, but whether I end up actually using it for its intended purposes is another matter because. This is actually going to be an outline for um, an animation that I'm working on. So uh, some of which you would have seen a couple of weeks or so ago uh, with the uh, Lamar uh, one and a half stuff that we did for um, uh, Disney Animation Studio. So that's all good. So uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's just get cracking. There's nobody in the chat, so but then I've only literally just announced this two seconds ago. So. So, um, let's just make sure I can see what I'm pointing this at. Right, because otherwise you're not going to be able to see what I'm... So I'm just going to go wonky cam a minute. Ta -da. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, first of all, actually, I'm just going to mention the uh, Lemma One Half um, a memorial book which came out uh, this is the oops almost got that on the floor uh, this is the uh, first edition uh, came out in 1996 um, I didn't actually guess it then I got it some years later um, but uh, basically this this has been a big inspiration to me with um, the uh, the stuff that I'm doing at the moment for this animation um, it's just it's just stunning one day I actually oh what have I got in here so it's in here again, a practice from some, don't know when that's, some time ago, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, yeah, so this has just been a really big in, um, uh, influence on, on what I'm doing for the animation stuff. I'm not really uh, copying anything out of here, um, but just the beautiful artwork and so forth is always nice to uh, just ogle up and so forth and just see how... Um, you know, sort of uh, an artist like Rumiko Takahashi just, you know, sort of brings this all together. It's just uh, a beautiful object to have. But um, so, yeah, if you can get a copy of this, I would highly recommend it. Obviously, particularly if you're into Lemmar, there's just lots of little cute illustrations like these little Lemmars here. So, we've got a uh, girl type on the left there with a uh, little Genma <laughs> as a panda, I guess, and uh, Lemmar Kun just uh, scratching his head with peach and there. So, but yeah, it's just a beautiful book. I mean, it's uh, packed full of lots of the um, early colour illustrations and that. So, let's see, uh, this uh, number 103, so that's uh, just down here. These ones, these are actually sort of pretty early uh, Lama uh, one half um, illustrations because they're from 87, so, uh, which I think was the year that the first manga came out. Um, well, not manga, but, you know, in um, Shonen Sunday, so... Um, it was first uh, started serialization so um but yeah it's it's just a beautiful book to look through and um but more than that it's it's like anything sort of japanese it's just an insane level of detail i mean i'd be lying if i could say that i can actually uh read this because obviously it's full of kanji and uh also katakana which i'm still impressed to learn but i can at least read the hiragana so that's uh nam uh, that looks like uh, possibly katakana su Zuda, Zu, mm, something. So, <laughs> but it's just just lovely to look at. So, um, yeah, just an insane level of detail throughout the whole of it. So, certainly gives me something to leaf through and uh, just uh, genuinely enjoy. So, there's a lot of the um, very well known 
um, illustrations, like for example this one, this one pops up sometimes when you sort of look on Google. Um, but yeah, also some, um, where was it? This is quite interesting because this, this must be pretty early illustrations, just to say 88. So because the very early sort of stuff that Takahashi drew of uh, Lamo as um, girl type or uh, Lamo chan uh, she actually has uh, black hair just like Lamo Kun, so interesting nonetheless. So yes, yeah, so that's been a big influence to me and um, obviously there's the, the manga there and I've been working on a bit for the animation and um, and then I thought, oh, I need to draw um, um, uh, Lama when uh, he, she enters uh, Nekoken, uh, which is sort of like that state where you see Lama sort of, uh, his uh, fear of cats gets the better of him and uh, he has to fight. Uh, well, he turns, uh, basically fights as a cat. So, well, yeah, so I drew something and then I realised that in the um, uh, the third well, I say the third volume, was actually volumes five and six. Uh, these are the uh, two and one editions from Viz. Um, but where is that? Somewhere around here. Yeah. So I noticed actually there's this, this little tiny illustration just down here in the bottom left uh, with uh, Nama Chan sort of kind of leaping. But a couple of days before that, um, I'd actually drawn um, a couple of. Um, illustrations to sort of actually of this kind of pose um so this was my first attempt i've actually left all the pencil markings there um i didn't really have a point of reference because i didn't actually think about looking in the manga i kind of forgotten that um uh, uh my chan ends up there in nickelken um 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 from from volume i suppose it's in volume six overall but anyway regardless um so i kind of drew that but it wasn't quite right there's a bit of a strange sort of hump here sort of where uh, Lamar's back and uh, sort of behind meet um the hand pose is okay don't mind that too much some of the position around the knees is a bit a bit off um but overall the expression is right um that's good uh, slightly crazed look um the feet position is okay it's not great the the far foot here needs is a little bit of an afterthought, I'd say, but overall not too bad. So today I um, not that one. I redrew this, just slightly re envisaging it because obviously this will be part of an animated sequence. So thinking about the hand movements and um, redrew this. Now I'm much happier with this one because uh, the back of uh, Lama here is much more in line with where it would naturally curve to some some degree. It would obviously come quite sharply down here and so forth. So I'm much happier with that. The, the position of the knees is also much better, much more natural. Um, and um, if this was all shaded, I quite like these creases here. Um, the position of the arms might look a little bit strange to start with because naturally you're, I don't know if I can really show this, <laughs> but um, maybe if I turn the camera around. Uh, I, I may explain this guys because obviously it's all well and good to be going about how to do pixel art, but if you don't understand the process of drawing in the first place, um, it makes it a bit difficult. Let's just see if anybody is in the chat. Hey there, Kev, how you doing? Hope you're all right. So, seems as if it's all quiet on the Western Front in the chat today, which is unusual. Usually there's a few people here, but I haven't been streaming a lot lately, so I guess people are a little bit um, not used to me streaming at the moment. But anyway, I'm going to carry on regardless. Um, yeah, so I hope you're doing really well, Kev. So, um, so basically, yeah, the, the hands here may look a little bit, um, let me just make sure I can see OBS. May look a little bit strange because, like, naturally, if you if you had your fist forwards, you know, you're not going to have your arm bent like that. But what you've got to think is that this is sort of like this cat food state, so it's actually the fingers are kind of like almost kind of outstretched. So it's not quite a fist, maybe the hands, but I've drawn isn't quite as clear as it could be. I, hands are so difficult to draw, you, you know, and I've been drawing them for years, um, in total. But I have to say, because it's only really in the past year that I've actually really got back into my drawing big time, I, I still find hands. <sighs> They're so difficult, aren't they? And I always need points of reference usually when drawing them, but those ones I did actually manage to draw just from my mind, which possibly why they're a little bit. But it's kind of like this pose, isn't it? So if you think about that sort of... But of course, obviously, the arm is lunging forwards. So, so yeah, it does look a bit like, well, the arm's upside down like this, but how would the fist be like that? But actually, it's more, it's more that the arm is bent like this, and there's like a 
bit of a claw there so so that's kind of what that's all about um yeah so basically what we're going to do is we're going to redraw this for um i'm just going to move the um webcam now because i don't need to keep that up there just make sure i'm not going to pull anything else down do, do, do. here we go that's all good right should hopefully be able to see me hey there amiga workbench hope you're well <laughs> so we're back in oh <laughs> let me just move this out of the way Nobody needs to see that I've actually had uh, salad this evening, do they? I forgot that I hadn't taken it back up to the kitchen. So, uh, yes, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to reproduce that uh, drawing uh, this evening um, uh, on, on the Amiga 600 right in front of me. So um, I'm just going to make sure that I can follow what chat there is. So how are you doing, Amiga Workbench? How you, I hope you're all well. So... My first stream in just over a week since the uh, checkmate stuff that we did uh, uh, just over a week ago. So, so that was fun. Um, yeah. So, there we go. Let's make sure I can see everything on here. Nice. Looks good. Okay. So, I'll just leave it up that way. I think that'll be fine. I'm going to make sure we've got some lights on here because now we're getting to mid all well, Mid stroke later August. Sadly, those evenings are beginning to draw in a bit, bit again, aren't they? So let's make sure you can see the Amiga full screen. I'm going to disappear a bit for this video, guys. Um, not just because I'm not wearing makeup, <laughs> which is not an unusual occurrence for me. It has to be said. Um, but um, more, more the fact that I want to um, be able to snip certain bits of this video out to uh, use. Um, uh, for a video that I'm putting together, which is going to pray see these tips into a nice or sort of digestible video. So, so let's just move me full screen. There we go. So you can see my Amiga 600 there. Um, do let me know about the frame rate, guys, as well, because I'm actually going to try recording live from this stream. Um, I know um, last time I did this, it didn't work out so well. Um, I hope you can all hear me still fine. So if you have any questions as I'm working on this, do let me know. Um, and uh, we'll just get started. Let's go full screen for me. Excellent. Yeah, so this is the first sort of Pixar stream I've done in a while, and um, yeah, it'd be good to get on with some stuff. Actually, just to very, very, very quickly, um, I have been drawing some stuff. Um, Let's just see how much. I can't remember whether I've actually saved this as an anim. It certainly is a Disney Animation Studio file. Ah, oh, yes, I have. So this may actually play too fast, but I'll slow it down. Yeah, playing way too fast. Slow down. Oh, now it's stopped all the time. Okay, view tech isn't going to work for this, is it? So let's just drop this into uh, D Paint. I just wanted to show you what progress I've made on the animation since uh, I did the stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, drawn quite a few new frames, um, and there's still sort of gaps and bits and pieces here and there, which obviously needs to be filled in. But this piece of artwork which I'm working on today is going to be. Uh, for for this, so let's just set the rate to 12 frames per second. So yeah, so these are some of the new frames that have, were worked on um, a couple of weeks ago by myself. I didn't stream this at all, I just drew them. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of... So basically we've gone from this sort of like surprise pose. Um, I won't spoil what's happened, but I think anybody familiar with Lemma will probably guess what's, going, uh, what's happened. So there's some, some surprise and then it's the eyes closed. I'm liking the eyes closed animation. Pretty happy with that. I need to get the eyebrows as um, Lamar closes um, eyes just to um, just cinch down a little bit. But that's all fairly straightforward. But otherwise, it all plays rather nice. Should have really played it from the beginning there. So, so obviously there's a lot to sketch in and invention. It's got to be coloured and then it will need some background art. So yeah. 
but progress is going well on this and this this what we're doing stuff will be all part of this so uh yeah so all good let's come out of this actually what i'll do is i'm just going to delete all the frames Seems we've got the paint open now and I'm just going to increase the screen colours. Okay, so um, why do I increase the colours from two colours? If I'm just doing an outline, why do I need more than two colours to start with? Um, simple reason. Uh, I need a couple of colours just to make sure the do let's paint user interface is intelligible. <laughs> um, so, uh, ooh, don't want to exchange stuff. Um, there we go. So that was default. Nope. Palette default palette that's the one I want um, and set, uh, secondly I need a third colour basically for the outline uh, my initial sketch um, which will then be um, overdone with the with the black pen so yeah okay so I've got my sketch here uh, actually you can't see that can you because the webcam is not doing anything this evening because I'm recording the output so as I say, if the audio levels aren't good, guys, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to carry on as is. So, if you can see everything, well, okay. So, okay, cool. So, um, yeah. So the blue colour is what I'm going to start with, um, just because I can easily erase this with a stencil. Uh, I've got a video on my channel all about stencils. Um, it's also just get the full over scan because that'll be helpful um so this was something that wasn't necessarily um let's just delete the picture so, there we go i think that's about right a little bit big let's just get that a bit smaller Let's just go with graphics over scan. So let's just change that back to screen. Oh, thanks, Kev. Glad that the um, audio is good and you're very kind. <laughs> As I say, this is a very last minute announced stream. So, um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting big numbers. So it's so lovely to see some. A good amount of people here like you Kev and uh, everybody else who's I can see the viewing stats so we have got people actually watching um, but uh, people are happy to watch um, or listen um, I think that's where I'm going wrong probably just having a few little problems here getting the um, Oh, I tell you why it is. Sorry, I've just been a nana, am I? Aren't I? I've just realised why Duet's Paint is not increasing the screen size when I change it to graphics over scans because let's just ditch that. It's because I still have um, my screen set to TV over scan because, as I said at the very start of the stream, I'll be mostly using this on the, um, the portable television, which of course obviously isn't going to like. Um, you overscan too much, so let's just adjust this. I'll just close down tool manager there. There we go, that's better, isn't it? <laughs> so it should now be full screen here. Let's just open up tool manager again. Drop you down there. There we go, good. All good. Let's get rid of some of these. Right, so we want a low res screen. Let's try that one again, folks. <laughs> we'll go with four colors to start with. That's where I always start. We're going to go with graphics over scan. There we go. Great. We have full screen, as you can see there. Just going to swap these, uh, the black and the gray colors around just because it makes it a little bit easier to work with. But of course, there's no hard and fast rule with this. So, um, just like when I'm actually drawing any manga, I'll, I'll, I'll always start with a sketch. Um, I roughly know how big I want this to be. Um, so, I'm going to guess that that circle is going to be um, 
plenty big enough. Um, the easy way to tell this is if you drop one head down um, for this joint and another head here, I can generally tell that the arms outstretched aren't going to be wider than that. And the rear half of the lumbar is again going to be about a head's width, just a bit less less than that. So I know I've got plenty of room here, um, but um, I don't necessarily want this to take full screen um, as part of the animation. So, so I think this is this is good enough as a starter. So, but otherwise I approach this just the same as if I was um, drawing a piece of manga, um, which has a little bit of an outline to start with. So. Just purely because um, it helps to, um, you know, get your proportions right, basically. So, so let's draw a, oops, dividing line roughly. So this is going to be the facial uh, positioning is a little bit, just not quite in the middle, but it's it's close to. Um, and then I'm just going to drag down here. So this is just a rough outline. This is not the final inked lines. It's so it's going to look a little bit weird. Um, but if any of you have watched the little speed draws that I've done on previous videos or the ones that I post on my Twitter, um, you will see how this very quickly turns into something a little bit better than what the first outline appears so so yeah so this is the first part of the process is just doing a very uh, very rough outline um, the circle can be a little bit misleading at times uh, because um, I'm not going to treat the full sort of uh, bottom part of the arc of the the, the um, circle as the jawline in this instance um, although with some um, manga characters that works fine, it doesn't actually work for most of um, Rumiko Takahashi's uh, style, uh, particularly with uh, Ranma, but um, yeah, so I just find that um, using the full sweep of that, um, that circle just doesn't quite work, um, so yeah. It works quite well for um, a lot of the Kiyoani stuff, though, um, and I, d I don't want to say this uh, in what sounds like a completely um, catty way, shall we say, which is quite amusing since we're doing uh, Neko-chan, uh, <laughs> Lama in, uh, in Neko-ken, um, <laughs> got my words completely muddled there. Um, but um, I suppose in an age of like a lot of CG anime, I'm guessing that the computer is leading to more technically true proportions in a, a lot of uh, art creation on computers. And so it tends to lose, you know, it tends to those characters that may be a bit more CG um, derived, perhaps tend to um, fit better with using that sort of full sort of perfect circle sweep um, of that bottom line so it's, it's really just something to get things going really to be more uh, honest with you so yeah so this this bit is always going to take the most work getting this outline correct to start with uh, but you have to get this in the right ballpark because uh, otherwise um, it's just everything else that you base on top of this will be, um, well, quite frankly, on a shaky foundation, and um, well, wrong. Um, so, so yes, you you really do want to get this bit right. And I'm actually going to adjust this central point here. And I think what I'm going to do is. So yeah, there's there's quite a bit of cutting about at this stage, but yeah, it pays to get this bit right. So, so let's go with there. Um, and this is something you'll get better with experience. So it 
it also uh, is all about knowing your characters which is why uh, the memorial book which I showed you at the start of the stream is actually quite useful because if you're drawing uh, a character that's not obviously yours um, it's helpful to actually get a bit of a feel for what that character looks like and um, there are a few better ways of doing it than um, looking at the source material and uh, yeah getting a good feel for it that way okay so I'm pretty happy with that outline now and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line here it's going to pretty much mark the upper part of the eyes um, and what I'm now going to do is just ever so slightly shorten uh, the jawline a bit so I can do that just by picking this up because uh, it's a bit of a hallmark of uh, Rumiko Takahashi's work but her um, characters have very short jaws proportionally to um, um, a lot of uh, other manga that you'll see so that'll be roughly sort of like the jaw depth if, it, if I can call it that or the chin length um, on a lot of manga will be about a third or so uh, maybe of the overall head height so but uh, yeah just that's not really the case here so I've got a very rough outline there it's good enough and um, I'm just gonna very uh, basically put in uh, the outline for the eyes because as I've said many a times before I always feel better when the eyes start coming together and that goes for whether I'm doing pixel art or anything so so it goes in like so. There we are. And I just have these slightly shaky bottoms of the eyes here. It's not not to signify weeping or anything in this case. It's it's just illustrate the uh, well the aggression really so um rather just a lilash there so these blue marks are very much just um as always um just very rough outlines there we go quite tall pupils on these. I'm going to move this up a bit as well. So yeah, at this stage I'll be very much expecting to have to adjust everything um, at a later stage. So, um, and I'm not going to go to town on uh, details like the, the thickness of the uh, eyelashes and all the rest of it, but just to get a bit of an idea, um, just going to just put in the nose here. So obviously no shading is done at this point at all. So, yep, I'm using an Amiga 600 um, Amiga Workbench. Usually on these streams, you'll you'll see me using it, but because I'm recording the output um, for um, a video that I'm doing, so that I can kill two birds with one stone to try and get my amount of videos that I produce up a little bit um, compared to the amount of streaming that I had been doing. Um, I'm um, recording the output and when I did this the other time it slowed everything down too much um, with the, the stream quality so I'm now taking a different tactic with this so we'll just see how it goes but yes this is on a real Amiga 600 which is clicking away I'm sure you can hear Yeah, I'm good, Error42. Lovely to see you too. Yes, I've not been streaming for uh, a week or uh, so. Certainly not done any pixel art for a while. Um, but um, I've just been really busy uh, with all the stuff related to Japan that's required my attention. And if I don't finish this tonight, guys, um, I will be showing the final results eventually, uh, obviously. Um, and uh, there will be a part of the, the video that will this this stream will contribute towards as well um but yeah the, the japan stuff's been uh, very forefront of my mind of late um lots of stuff to 
um, sort out for that basically so um, yeah so but I hope you're well Erin 42 how are you doing long time no see as they say <laughs> even though the last stream was really only just over a week ago but it seems a lot longer uh, but I've had a, a really busy weekend I um, started the uh, TEFL course the teaching English as a foreign language course this weekend in Brighton which was amazing it was one of the best courses I've been on in my life and I don't say that lightly it's I'm not resorting to hyperbole um, I genuinely mean that it was it was superb the uh, tutor Simon was uh, incredibly inspirational I'm actually just gonna make these eyes just sit up just a little bit higher than that dividing line that I drew I'm not really not just put that just a little bit too high actually let's just bring you back down again there we go So yeah, um, so I've just been really busy with that. The course was awesome, as I say. Um, obviously, there's the big online component, which I'm working on. Um, that's the other thing that's going to be consuming quite a bit of my time over the coming months. Basically, it's 120 hours. There's uh, coursework or essays to write, I guess. And um, yeah, just generally sorting everything else out is going to um, take quite a bit of my time up. But um Obviously, far from it, when I, I'm not going to be stopping streaming or doing my videos. If anything, it's just actually helped me focus a bit more on, um, um, you know, what I'm actually putting out, shall we say. Oh, I didn't actually want to cut that. <laughs> so let's just make sure that's on the same line. So I can make sure I'm on the same line by holding down shift. Um, and uh, that will mean that the mouse doesn't waver too much from... A horizontal position so as always I'm using the line tool this is pretty um, essential I would say um, I think if you were to try and do this with the freehand tool it would be a bit of a fool's game you know trying to draw the outline of a face even with an optical mouse which is what I use it's 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 hard so yeah you want to use your line tool because that's going to give you the precision you need because yeah, using the freehand tool is fine for when you get down to shading and stuff, but yeah. You're tired? Ah, oh, yeah. Tired from getting, tired from work, so getting a little done, but otherwise, okay, that's, that's the main thing, so. <laughs> I thought you said for a minute that you're tired from getting so little done, I thought, well, how does that work? <laughs> Although I can understand that inertia sometimes can be very sapping. Okay, so this is just a very rough outline. So it looks a little bit crazy at the moment, but this is quite a crazy expression. So let's get rid of some of these outlines now. I'm just going to tidy up a bit of the outline before I start inking, so to speak, properly. Because I do also need to do the rest of the um, the body. Um, Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Sarah 42 It's, um, I wouldn't say it's coming easy to me, um, you know, that I've still got lots of fears. I actually wrote a few notes in my notebook, um, that I've been using over the weekend about what lays ahead, shall we say, sort of the things that are in my mind about the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, not that I'm saying, that, uh, you know, but I, I don't want you to sort of feel that it's just so innately unique to myself that I'm able just to get on with this without any fears, because that's far from the truth. But I'm fairly open about that, really. Um, so, yeah, I'll talk more about that in a minute. So what I'm doing here, guys, is again using that line tool, but I'm just evening up the, the actual... Um, 
sort of the the gradient of the um, border curve and you do that with getting the stepping right of the pixels I'm also going to bring this across a bit because it's a little bit wrong I've kind of basically completely destroyed the original outline I made but that's okay but as I say even though this is just a rough outline you do want to get this pretty much in the right ballpark because otherwise um, it's going to be hard to correct later on down the line. It will it'll always look a bit off. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so this stepping idea is that you go from like, here we've got, I think, probably six pixels at the guess, and then down to five, one, two, three, five, and then four, and then you've got some fours, and then threes, and then eventually it drops to ones. It, it Just basically, so you don't go from two to one to three to two to one, you know, like there's a... A clear stepping that's what you want so you can see sweet Tweety Pie at the moment yeah there is a bit of Tweety Pie in this yeah don't be sorry <laughs> yeah it's gonna look a bit bit unusual at the moment but you uh, I'm just gonna draw the mouth in and um, and then I'm gonna do the actual eyebrows and you'll be well I'm not saying you will be astonished but if you're not as au fait with the difference that eyebrows make to a human emotion. It's it's the, it's quite um, illuminating to see it for the first time. Well, not the first time, but you know that like when you sort of see it happen, you're like, whoa, how did that make such a big difference? But you know, like in so much of um, sort of manga and well, any cartoon caricature. And indeed, in a photograph or any sort of art form, you know, the, the telltale sign of true emotions can often be found in the eyebrows. And really, that's your biggest tool at your disposal for um, sort of cartoon or manga style um, drawing is... What are the eyebrows doing? Because that's going to tell you actually what the character's real emotion is, and then you then obviously the mouth and so forth supports that. It, it is about the complete ensemble, but um, it's um, yeah, you'll be surprised. <laughs> okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'd say the face is just a smidge wide at the moment, so I'm just going to bring this in. Takahashi's uh, characters do tend to have slightly wider faces. Um, just got to be a bit careful here not to overdo it, though. Yeah, I think about there is about right. But obviously, if this is your own character, you can do what you want with it. You know, like you follow your own rules. Obviously, I'm doing a, a spoof game introduction, so. But yeah, back to what you were saying, Ever 42, about, you know, sort of, um, um, you know, getting on and doing it. It's, yeah, I've still got lots of fears. There's so many things for me to sort out. You know, it's not going to be happening just yet. Um, but obviously, I want to keep my options open. And whilst I've applied for Interac, uh, Interact, Interact, um, rather, um, I do also plan, um, uh, if at all possible, applying for the JET program, but obviously that only opens uh, in October, I believe. And that's the Japanese government's sort of actual recruitment program. Um, I think overall there, it would be better to do it through JET, um, but I just got to a point um, a few weeks ago with it. That I just had to start making a, a bit of a, a, some progress on it because otherwise I was just continuously thinking about it in my head like oh I could do this I could do that and not actually do anything about it so so yes I'll go on uh, mention my notebook in a moment so because I wrote some interesting words and I don't actually have that notebook in here at the minute but I might dig it out in a moment but we'll concentrate on the main matter at hand at the minute so so yeah so i'm just continuing to do these blue outlines because as i say these are going to be much easier for me to erase 
Um, um, when it comes to actually doing the black inking, or I might decide actually that's really close and I can convert these quite easily into um, into uh, the black inked outlines, so which is nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, okay, so these, these eyebrows, so I'm going to draw these in, because I've actually already partially got them in, because I've got this little wrinkle just here in the, uh, and these are going to make quite a difference, because character eyebrows look strange anyway, um, But uh, they really do make the difference um, in the expression of the character. Actually, I'm going to come down here. Now, some of these are going to be somewhat covered up by the um, the fringe, the bangs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm going to call them a fringe because that's what we call them over here. Um, but yeah, they're gonna. That looks good. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. Let's take away some of the stepping, just to sort this out. It's a little, little bit off. And then what we can do is just ever so slightly introduce the ear in. You remember doing Tweety Pie animation for your daughter, Amiga Workbench? Cool. And you did it with Duet's Paper and recorded its video back in the day, even though you can't remember how to use it now. I think I came across a captured version of it. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I remember I used to record stuff from my Amiga, the animations. I, I did talk about it. I think possibly on the Disney Animation Studio stream that I did a couple of weeks ago about how, unfortunately, all of my stuff that I created uh, back in the day in the 90s is now, it's long gone, sadly, but I did, did record a lot of my animations onto um, videotape as well. Um, yeah. Which is a shame, but I, I think the overall quality of the work that I'm producing now is better than what I was producing back then anyway. So, although by the end of it, I was doing quite okay with it, but that was very much towards sort of 1998 or thereabouts, I guess, when I think uh, I was a bit older by then. I was about 15 years old and um, a little bit more... Um, experience with it all than compared to some of my more childhood efforts shall we say a few years prior so again i'm just tidying up these these steppings here just to smooth it out a little bit um and um i'm not using the curve tool um just because i'm doing paint's quite limited other tools like personal paint have bezier curves um which do have a lot of advantages uh, brilliance also has bezier curves a um, bit like what you'd get in a structured drawing pack package where you can put a couple of points on a curve and then you can adjust the sort of like the uh, contortion I suppose is the only way I can describe it off the top of my head of that um, that curve hey Jan how are you doing hope you're well you're from the Netherlands. Well, uh, hello to the Netherlands. Good to see people from the Netherlands in the chat. So it's nice to have you the other week as well in the Checkmate stream. Really bringing up memories. Cool. So that's awesome. Well, that's what it's all about. Bringing up memories makes you want to fire up the Miggy again. That's really cool. So, um, yeah, this is all about the memories for me as well. Um, it's also about um, getting on and creating new stuff, making new memories with it all. So... <laughs> Yeah, so so pixel art when it's 
I don't obviously want to just sort of completely blow my trumpet and sort of, you know, come across as arrogant because that's the last thing that I personally believe myself to be. And I'm sure most of the people who follow me know that I'm not, not that kind of person. But this bit takes time and I do take a bit of pride in getting the outline right because if you get it wrong at this stage, as I've, I've said a couple of times now so far in the stream, if you get it, get your outline wrong at this stage, it's going to be really hard for you to correct it. If, if impossible to do at a later stage. So it's really important to spend a bit of time on this bit. You're never going to get this bit exactly right because you're not able to, well, you shouldn't really be anti-aliasing anything at this stage. Uh, you've got no shading. It's um, So it's all going to look a little bit um, out of sorts, shall we say, at this stage. Um, okay, so face is looking pretty good. Um, now I have a choice. Do I continue um, with um, with this, or do I now move on to um, the rest of the body? I'm going to carry on with the face. That's my decision. I'm also going to get some juice in it because it is really, really warm in here. Actually, I'll be back just in a moment, guys. Amiga Workbench, you sold your Amiga setup around 90. I had a Rev 6A A500. Nice. Yeah, that's that's a really nice machine. I've got a, not the one that's in the Checkmate case now, but I've got a lovely, um, very good condition Amiga 500 in, um, obviously it's original case. It won't be moving from that. That's a Rev 6A. Um, works lovely. Which is why I was so sort of like, oh, the um, Checkmate adapter for the ACA doesn't work on the other Rev 6A that I've got. Um, although, I mean, I don't do Facebook. Um, I shan't be going back there. Um, but uh, I think there's been quite a few discussions on the Checkmate group about how that's all unfolding. But there is somebody else who's got a, a working Rev 6A with their ACA. So Stephen's actually sent another one. Um, Zorro board that is out to me uh, today, I believe, actually. I'll need to reply to his text um, after the stream. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that, maybe that one will work. Um, but yeah, lovely machine. You can you can do a lot with that. Uh, I think the, the, the big limitations with the original Amiga 500s, uh, from an animation point of view, not from a pixel art point of view, is that 512k of chip RAM. You can modify a Rev 6A, as I'm sure you're probably well aware, Amiga Workbench, um, to turn the 501 card into chip, proper chip memory, not slow RAM. Um, but um, but yeah, 512K, if you want to do uh, 16 or 32 colour animations, you can do quite a bit. You'll be surprised, but the, the length can be a bit limited. Uh, but one mega chip RAM can make all the difference. But that's one of the reasons why I really like the Amiga 600. It's it's an absolute cinch to put two mega chip RAM on there, and plus you get that authentic uh, Amiga 68000 experience, which some people would say is masochism on my part. But uh, that's uh, you know uh, uh, it probably is in in part, but it's what I remember. Um, 
and um, I had many happy years using a 68,000 Amiga before I um, got an Amiga 1200 with an O20 in it. Um, so, um, and that never stopped me having fun. So, I take a slightly philosophical look at these things these days. That's why I'm, whilst I congratulate things like the vampire, they're, they're not for me. Yeah, new memories should be great indeed. I did some D paint, says Jan. Uh, D paint drawing back in the days, but you remember how I just, oh, oh, thank you. Well, to be honest with you, um, let me just flip back to webcam. So, I don't know if you caught the start of the stream, Jan. Um, hey, I am here. Um, but basically, um, uh, yeah, the reason why I'm doing the Amiga output as full screen, which I don't usually do, to be honest, guys, is that I want to play see what I'm doing this evening into a video that I'm going to put out later this week. Um, but basically, I'm copying uh, a sketch. Well, not co well, I suppose I'm kind of copying a sketch, which I did earlier on today. Um, so that obviously makes it quicker. I, I must admit, I do often draw the initial stage of my pixel art. just play One, because I really enjoy it. Um, I love hand drawing stuff as well. I don't always. Um, not everything does. I mean, like the bit of animation that I showed at the start, that wasn't drawn to start with. So, so yes, yeah, so I'm working from that. So, just in case you're wondering, uh, switch back to full screen. Use the right mouse. Um, but yeah, I I love um, you know sort of drawing manga in general. But you know, sort of like. I don't know what it is. I mean, there's nothing stopping me doing this on a sprite on my Mac. Um, but I have to say, I just really enjoy using my Amiga to do it. It's um, it's great. But yeah, the Amiga 600 is great because you've got that easy, um, easy ability to expand to 2 mega chip RAM. You don't have to worry about, will the motherboard have battery corrosion, which is much more complicated to sort out um, than the capacitor issue. Albeit the fact that I wouldn't know what I was doing if a capacitor stared me in the face. Um, I'm technical, but not technical in that way. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, Amiga Workbench. I was going to say I'm I'm pretty certain that you knew how to um, get your Amiga 500 using that as one full meg of chip RAM. But yeah, in 512K you can do quite a bit. But just not quite as much as what you can with uh, an Amiga uh, with two meg of chip RAM or a mega chip RAM. And uh, but I do do use the Amiga five hundred from time to time because, well, who wouldn't like uh, the blue and uh, blue and uh, orange Amiga workbench? In fact, in some respects, uh, we're channeling the the those one point three colours here with this uh, sketch palette here, aren't we? <laughs> So um, what I've ended up doing here, guys, and I think this uh, is worth me mentioning, is I've pretty much ended up drawing, um, certainly the facial outline at the moment is pretty much bang on with how um, I want um, the actual inked outline to look. Um, just making a few little adjustments there. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, I'm going to show you how this gets converted into a proper inked outline. And and then I'm going to show you how I use this as a, as a sketching sort of um, colour as well. So you get to learn both, both little techniques. But uh, yeah, don't say it's not good value for money. There we go, cool. That's looking better. You did use the curve tool. I do occasionally use it, Jan. Yeah, it, it does have its uses. It's just unfortunate that it's, uh, yeah, it's literally just, you, you, you can't adjust it after that. So it is a little bit limited. But, you know, like, for example, these curves at the top here, you could probably draw that curve quite happily without doing it by hand. But, I, yeah, so that's roughly it, isn't it? It's not quite, but it's it's in the ballpark. 
um, you know, so, but I've, I've just got so used to doing it with the line tool now. Um, it's just something that comes with experience, I think, more than anything. Um, I'm sure it's slower, but, um, then who was doing pixel art to be fast? <laughs> you know? I, I do hope I'm able to finish this one tonight because I would actually like to put the whole time lapse on Twitter tonight so you can sort of see it all. But we'll see how it goes. We'll we'll focus on quality rather than rushing because the idea is that this will make up um, a keyframe for the animation that I'm working on. Although I might spend a bit more time doing the shading at a later date. But if we can get the, the general gist of this done, that'll be cool. But yeah, what you're saying, Jan, is that there is absolutely no right or wrong way about how to do this. You should do this in a way that feels most natural to you and the way that you're getting the results that you want out of it. That is so crucial with any tool that you use. And I'm just going to extend a little bit here. Just running a little bit out of room there around the ear. Okay. The other nice thing about doing this on an LCD is that I can actually see what I'm doing without having to use the magnify tool hardly at all at this stage. Because um, as nice as the pixel art looks when it's finished on a TV, it's it's not the easiest things to draw on. It has to be said because you get a, the color is less clear as to what's happening. Um, you know, particularly around the reds, uh, they. They get to a certain point of saturation where you can't see the difference and you're not really hit full intensity and then suddenly it will just jump up to sort of almost like a a neon red and you're like oh where was the subtlety in between so it's quite interesting um to compare that but i suppose that's just in our case power color space um just a different color gamut isn't it to rgb Yeah, exactly. It's it's you've got to find your own way of working with these things, and you know, and I can't emphasise it enough. Is that you know you you will have to practice, and through practice you will you'll find what that way of working is, and and suddenly instead of looking for a YouTube video which promises to tell you that the one magic thing that you're not doing to be able to draw well um, the key to it is like anything in life it's just making time to practice um, wish I could take my advice for everything on that like for example if I'm learning Japanese it's um, I'm doing better at the kana than I am the actual language side of things at the moment but yeah Thankfully, I do have the evening class that I took this year just gone behind me, so that gives me some points of reference. Okay, I'd say that that's pretty close to my sketch, which is good. I'm not going to do the little lines, because there's actually little lines to signify the shape of the face and uh, whatnot there on my original sketch, but I'm actually not going to include those yet, because I'm going to do those with colour. I am also going to change my other little thing because oh, just not able to get these pixels that I've stamped down. The hair is just a little bit flat and whilst it's not too bad, it just needs a little bit more height, like so. But that's something that comes from knowing your character as well. So um, over the years, a bit like the Evangelion stuff, the Kaon stuff, um, the Totoro, I haven't done any Totoro pics like I'm going to have to do some of that sometime. Um, the landmark stuff, the, um, basically all of the characters that I know from some of my Nadia stuff, uh, that I know from, uh, some of my favourite, uh, manga and anime. Um, you know, I know these characters fairly inside out, although I was a bit rusty with the landmark stuff to start with, it has to be said. Um, it just comes from knowing your characters inside out and that includes the one, your own characters. Because it's only then that you'll be able to pretty much draw that character in all sorts of emotional states. And I can't say that I'm a master at that. Um, but um, 
yeah, once you know your character, you'll be much better adept at um, spotting why something doesn't look right like I did there with the um, adjustment of the hair. But that's fairly universal to all sort of uh, manga. Have I ever used Sculpt Animate 4D on Smeagol Workbench? Actually, no, uh, I haven't. Do tell me more. Yeah, exactly, Jan. Yeah, so also like the Treeborn Girl animation when you clear some big parts. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, Disney Animation Studios pencil test is quite quite basic in that regard in terms of drawing tools. It's it's useful, but I would always uh, default to um, creating the um, the initial sketch like this or the initial sort of uh, parts of that drawing in in D Paint to start with. It's just more flexible. The magnify tools better. Um, yeah, it's just uh, overall a better tool for doing it in. But um, yeah, I have heard of Sculpt um, Amiga Workbench. I just um, I can't recall it um, all of its um, functions. Do I'd love to hear more about it if you want to put some details down in the chat. So. I suppose what it is, is I never really got into ray tracing. Could never really fathom it out. And I suppose just because I was always into cartoons and animation, no wonder I fell in love with anime uh, as a consequence when I was a kid. Um, I never really was that bothered about the fact I didn't really know much about it or... I had enough Imagine cover discs and so forth to, um, well, have enough tea coasters for life, but um, yeah, never really got into it, to be honest with you, ray tracing. Um, I was always much more about the, um, the pixel art and the animation side of things, because I suppose it more reflected what I was into, but that's not to say that these tools weren't um, good at all, far from it, so, okay, it's looking good actually, um, so uh, not too bad, I'm just going to shorten the mouth a bit on this side because it's just a little bit too long. Yeah, that's good. Better. Oh, very excited Pro Tools. Things like Robot Driver. Cool. That was on the Amiga, though, wasn't it? Sculpt 4D. Or, or is this a more modern product? I'm sure there was a ray tracing package on the Amiga called Sculpt. But I, I think that's what you're on about, isn't it? But um, um, if not, do you correct me? <laughs> So I'm just going to draw the pigtail in here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a black and white um, outline. Because actually, this is no sketch. This is me actually just drawing it. Um, well, straight off, really. To be honest, usually when I do an outline, I'll, I don't actually probably have any in you know in progress outlines that I usually draw because they're usually very very rough. Uh, the outlines that I do save are the finished articles. Once I've inked them, if I can use that parlance. Um, there we go. That's looking good. Let's just take that down like so. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Jan says thanks for confirming me. Workbench. That's uh, that's great. So, 
Uh, Yan says, actually never used Disney Studio, wasn't that far into animation? Still think Deep Two Adams is almost as good. Yeah, I've, do, to be honest with you, what I use Disney Animation Studio for is the pencil test tool. Uh, just because that is, until you get to do Let's Paint 5, and even then it's not quite as good. The um, onion skinning in Dulux Paint, which was included in version 4 onwards, just isn't as good as the one that's in Disney Animation Studio. It is pretty good in Disney Animation Studio, it has to be said. So that's the bit I like, is that actually when you start bringing together what you've drawn in Dulux Paint, and, um, and um, yeah, just basically... Um, making the edits and changing the bits and all the rest of it. That's where I think Disney Animation Studios excel excels. It also does a number of other things relating to um, background animation and merging that together with uh, your your characters and so forth as well. So, which can't be dismissed and hopefully I'm going to explore those um, at some point. But to be honest with you, when it comes to actually all the shading and the colouring and, and, and obviously the initial drawing, as I say, I always do that with Dulux Paint, just because it's got a bit more flexibility. Um, I find the experience is just a that bit nicer in uh, Dulux Paint overall. Um, and um, yeah, so it's it just suits me better doing it that way. To be honest with you. Um, so yes. Uh, it does have some neat tricks though, uh, Disney Animation Studio, like I said, the, 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 the background merging with characters and stuff, but to be honest with you, it's nothing you can't do with um, um, Dulux Paint, you just need to have careful palette management, a clear idea of what you're doing to start with, and off you go. To get that curve, I think so. Cool. Okay. So that's about right. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wonder about the top of this head here. Uh, I don't want to uh, go too mad here, but I just get the feeling that I just want my head to curve back down and around a little bit here. So. Because if you look at the back of your head, it sort of juts out a little bit at the back. And whilst this is no real life uh, drawing, it's you'll be surprised at what details are encapsulated even in the most simplest of uh, manga drawings. So yeah, they can sometimes be this almost sort of uh, squared off back of the head rather than it being perfectly smooth. Okay, that was good. So let's save this. Uh, the Amiga 6 was usually very stable indeed, but just in case. Oh, it's not in there. Graphics. Yeah, We'll just save this in cat foo again, even though it's um of the other animation. Okay, so save that like so. Um so Amiga Workbench says, you have Disney Animation Studio, but the past keys are so old, they have faded and hard to see values. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Although these days it's not too hard to um, find uh, appropriate ways to um, access the software, is there? <laughs> if, if you catch my drift. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the background now. Just in case we want familiar with this, this just allows us to draw multiple times over the top, like so. Decide that sucks and then delete it. So, um, but first of all, before actually before I do that, I'm gonna just um, 
change this into a black outline. So I'm going to create a stencil which I can go to effect stencil make. I want to affect the blue so I choose that to start with but then I'll invert it because that's just the simplest way to do it rather than me clicking three times the other colours and I can just drag the black over the top like so. Now I can fix the um, background. I'm going to turn off the stencil to start with so we'll turn that off. You can also use the apostrophe key to turn it on and off. Um, and then I'm going to lock the background so this is like a background layer almost so let's just fix that. Right now let's go back to our blue brush and as I say we can now draw over the top of this without it affecting the drawing below and that's quite important because what I'm going to have to do now is get the shoulder positions right um, and basically I'm going to do that by drawing a blue line across like so that's going to make this look more believable rather than trying to draw two shoulders separately like so there so it almost looks like she's got something through the bit of her teeth there but that's not actually what's happening <laughs> I'm just going to use the magnify tool a little bit for this, and then that's going to come down like so. Hey there, Sabretooth Barnacle, how you doing? I hope you're very well. Good to see you. Are you coming along to swag in a couple of weeks' time? I assume you are. Okay, so that line across there means that we've now got the shoulder line pretty much where it should be. So that's quite an important uh, detail if you want to sort of draw... Um, Really, well, I say realistic, but you know, believable characters. That's uh, quite an important part. Okay. It's a bit like drawing that initial um, outline of the face, isn't it? With the, the halfway point and all the rest of it. And whilst I chopped and changed it a lot, it did inform the structure of the face a lot, so I still do it. Yeah, I'm really well, Sabretooth Barnacle, really well, so. Yeah, yeah, and I totally agree. That is the one one thing about doing this paint that I would I would dearly love it if somebody could just hack the D paint binaries to support a multiple undo buffer. Um, I used um, the latest version of Personal Paint a couple of weeks ago. If you go on to uh, the Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast channel uh, with Doug, um, he very kindly invited me on to talk about the latest version of Personal Paint, and that does support a multiple undo buffer. Um, as does Brilliance, um, and Personal Paint is a really good product. And um, but I, I mm, it, it's still not Deluxe Paint, and I just dearly wish that Deluxe Paint had a multiple undo buffer. But you soon get used to not having it, actually, which sounds really b bizarre. But you, generally speaking, you become much more cautious about how you're drawing. I think I can only genuinely recollect one time recently, and I think it's when I was doing a stream that I actually screwed up something badly and really needed that undo buffer. Um, <laughs> but uh, it happened to the best of us. But like you say, yeah, and yeah discovering the, the background layer late into your deep paint game, that's a shame. <laughs> So what I'm drawing here is the uh, sleeves um, for the arms. Um, I'm going to introduce another colour in a minute. So, but I'm just going to get these bits sort of roughly right, and then um, then we'll move on to the 
um, how I'm going to get the arms to look natural as well because we've got a fourth colour that we can make use of. Hey, uh, apologies if I get this wrong. Um, Monsieur, Monsieur, <laughs> Nyan, used it as paint back in the day. I remember, uh, used to use it with another tool which you could dump a picture from RAM after a soft reset so I could modify a graphic picture from last gameplay. Yeah, they were cool, weren't they? Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you're well. And, um, yeah, great to see a new name in the chat. So, um, I hope you enjoy what you're seeing. Uh, we're doing some Lamar one half inspired manga i'm basically drawing this uh from a sketch that i did earlier on today if you go on my twitter which um you may already be a part of i don't know uh, you'll see the drawing that i'm working from um it's one that i drew earlier on today um but uh otherwise it's a very start of the stream <laughs> if you rewind back but uh yeah great to see you hope you're well So yeah, I'm just gonna get the the shirt just uh, or the blouse rather or whatever you want to call it. Uh just about right here. Um obviously it's gonna be a lot more detail that's required um at some point, but just want to get this bit just about in the right ballpark. Cool, okay, that's that's about right there. So this is basically the crease of the uh I'm gonna i I'm gonna say shirt, so <laughs> but Lamar's trade trademark sort of Chinese um red shirt. So uh yeah, uh I'm gonna just get back to the chat and just smoke guys because I just want to keep this fairly fast well, as fast moving as you can make pixel art <laughs> easier said than done okay cool you're in cardiff sabertooth barnacle oh, that's okay double 40th birthday shindig oh exciting Yeah, I can't, well, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that immensely, so, but uh, I can't believe how quickly the next um, s swag has come around. I'm, I'm hoping that the checkmate is in a better operational state then, so, um, yeah, I've managed to um, at least borrow for the time being a Rev5 uh, A500 board just to see if that made any difference. Um, it's made a bit of a difference with the Zorro board, but um, Steve has sent a, a different one out to me today, I believe. Uh, I need to get back to his text after tonight's stream. Uh, but basically, um, he's uh, sent out another board for me to test. But the Rev 5 is a bit more stable. Um, it's not 100% reliable, but um, I do have the option to buy the Rev 5 board um, if it does make a marked difference. But the problem with it is, is that... Um, and I was tangentially referring to this a minute ago with Amiga Workbench and um, their recollections of um, having an Amiga and all the rest of it is that um, the Rev 5 has obviously got a, a, a standard 512k Fat Agnes on it, not the um, Fatter Agnes. So um, it does mean that um, unfortunately uh, it's got a bit of a chip RAM limitation on it, 512k, and I put the, I tried an 8372A in it, the fatter, fatter Agnes, and it worked fine, um, but unfortunately, um, the Amiga seemed to boot up in NTSC mode for some reason, it's definitely a PAL Amiga 500, so and it works fine in PAL on the Rev, uh, the original Fat Agnes, so I don't know quite what's going on there, but yeah, a bit of a strange one, but I was led to believe that it's all to do with covering up a certain pin on the um, 
the fat Agnes chip, but um, unfortunately, um, well, I haven't tried it yet for one, but I I was led to believe that was if you wanted to convert a NTSC 500 over to use defaulting to Power Boot, but maybe maybe there is some sort of weird goings on there, so I I don't honestly know. But anyway, so hopefully I'll have the uh, the checkmate in a, uh, a somewhat operational state, if not completely operational state, uh, by the time that swag comes around, which will be cool. Okay, this isn't looking too bad. Um, it will need some adjustment, but it's not looking too bad. Got a little lumpy bumpiness going on here, but. A certain degree of it is to be expected when drawing this larger scale pixel up, but um, it does pay to refine it where, where necessary. It doesn't need it everywhere because sometimes um, there shouldn't be that uniformity, if that makes sense. Like here, actually, it does look a bit weird. I think that's a slight improvement, but I might need to adjust this still. I think basically what's happening here, actually looking at it, and what's giving it the illusion of being elongated is, is this bit is just too far over. Basically. So that wants to go somewhere there. Let's go with that for now. And we can adjust as necessary. If anything, maybe what's also needed is just a little bit more height in here. It's probably better. So you can see why I used the blue outline here, because uh, to get all the proportions right, it's just the same as doing a pencil sketch, really. Um, you just got to keep on trying bits and pieces out. until you get it right and then you ink the drawing so yeah it's a good idea Jan yeah I mean basically the only reason the 500 has gone inside of uh, my checkmate is because it's my surrogate Amiga 3000 replacement that I should never have sold 20 odd years ago but also because I have another Amiga 500 which is staying firmly in its original case but if basically the only Amigas I had were like one of each model which generally speaking is well certainly the console ones I don't have one of every model I'm not that um, crazy <laughs> what do you think my name is Trevor Dickinson um, <laughs> um, but uh, basically I've um, I've kept my, because I've only got one Amiga 1200, I certainly would never put my 600, well I wouldn't put the 1200 in there, never in a million years now, I've always regretted putting my Amiga 1200 I had back in the day in the tower, so, um, but um, not that I have that 1200, but the 1200 I've got now is one that I picked up at the end of last year, but um, yeah, basically, um, let's, let's come up here a bit, just a moment. Uh, the yeah, I'd never um, taken Amiga that uh, was the only one of its kind that I had out of its natural case, shall we say, its birth given case. <laughs> so let's just do the other little ties here. It would be easier with a Bezier line. You had Amiga 602. Cool. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier on, actually, about the uh, Beziers would be easier. So, um, Brilliance has got a good Bezier tool, which I do use from time to time. But uh, what I ended up saying earlier on, um, um, most, most you, you must tell me if I'm pronouncing your handle wrong. I do apologise. Um, and um, basically, I... Um, I've got so used to doing this now that I don't actually really mind 
Um, it's a bit, a bit masochistic maybe, but I've sort of just got so used to it really, to be honest with you. Mega Workbench asks, have I ever used a light pen? Uh, yes, and it was horrendous. <laughs> I seem to think that um, I bought one from Daytel Electronics. I used to sell all that kind of stuff. And, and I didn't keep it for very long because it was utter junk. So... Um, and very much like a, a light gun, it will only work on a CRT. So if you're thinking about getting a light pen as a way of drawing, don't. Seriously, don't. Just just invest those frustrating hours of learning to do this with a mouse. You're much better off just investing that money actually in a decent mouse for your Amiga. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and you sounds like you're on the same lines as me, that the regret of butchering certain cases in the past uh, hangs heavy in the mind. Yeah, these little bits here are going to need a little bit of finesse when it comes to it, but they're there. Um, Yeah, a little bit all over the shop those. The scale's a bit wrong as well, but I will adjust those. Um, yeah. Right, let's just tidy up this end of the shirt a bit. Yes, that was one thing I always regretted back in the day was how I butchered my Amiga uh, 1200 into a tower. This comes a little bit too far over, I think. I know it's these do need um, proper refinement, these lines, but as this is only meant to be the sketch stage, but yeah, that is that is actually quite ropey. I'm going to do that again. I know it's a sketch, but that's not good at all what I've done there. Top one's fine, but it's just not following the um, the contours of the shirt. It needs to actually come out like this a bit, and it might actually. Bizarrely, it, it's on paper. It doesn't actually need that emphasis of the breast line, but I think on here it's kind of better for it. I reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to very roughly grab this little bit here, just to pop it down. I'm going to even call these properly at some point, so don't get too alarmed at the roughness of this bit. draw the other tab and just a little bit so and then basically whilst all, not all of this will be showing essentially the the shirt goes all the way around the back here and then starts to fold up like so it's cinched in by 
the belt, which runs basically. Which, I don't know, it just looks a bit. Is it looking a bit wide? It does a bit. I think the issue is. Let's just get rid of that a moment. Oops. The issue here is I think the shoulder's just a little bit wide on this side. That's better. And then, okay. Come up around here like so. So these are just very rough lines again, so as all the blue lines are to start with. Okay. And obviously we're gonna leave a little gap here for the arm to poke down through. Okay, right, so we've got that bit, so let's save there. Buonasera, Mirko, come stai? Hey there, Amiga Do Furia, <laughs> how you doing? Nice to see a new name in the chat, so we're doing some deep aim, so. Just to go back to the Agnes NTSC issue, put a bit of tape over pin 4 to unconnect your NTSC, disconnect your PAL. Hmm, I wonder why. Um, the Rev 5, because it is definitely a PAL Rev 5 booted up an NTSC with it in them. How strange. I definitely got the, the, the Agnes the right way around, so. Because I know the orientation is different between the, the, those revisions, but yeah, it's definitely correct. So we've still locked the background, so that means that basically the, the blue is separate, as I can illustrate there by clearing it and then undoing it, but the black stays in situ. I can now use the orange to um, basically further lock the background, so let's fix that now. So basically when I click clear, that won't go. And now I can basically draw orange over the top of this and neither will be affected, so that's nice. So what I can do now is roughly sketch in the um, actual arms. Like so. So it's good to see another Amiga 600 user. This has all been live streamed from my Amiga 600. Um, usually there's a view of the Amiga, but I'm actually recording tonight's stream so that I can pray see what I'm talking about actually into another video. So uh, basically I'm just using full screen so I don't have to have slightly reduced uh, video quality when it comes to doing that. So I'm drawing the outline of the arm um, just so that um, this is only very rough at the moment so that I can make sure that the actual proportions are about right so this bit might take a little bit of tweaking because well it probably will <laughs> basically it's quite simple <laughs> it might take a little while because it will <laughs> So I was quite pleased with the way that this forearm turned out, actually, in my sketch. Um, it's not to say that uh, I'm not usually, but um, it just looked, it had a good curve on this underside here to sort of reflect that, uh, you haven't got the webcam on, but that underside of your arm actually has a bit of a curve to it. So, although my elbow is a little bit too pointy in this example. I might actually just bring that up a bit because it is just a little bit too tall there. 
yeah so this bit obviously takes a little bit of getting used to but you can see why i've locked the background now because i'll be able to pick up these bits and pieces and um not affect what i've drawn already so it's sort of like a non-destructive edit so i can now uh, cut this out here like so Uh, and then all the blue stays in situ, which is nice because it means I don't then have to draw it all again. Which is nice. Um, oh, wow, gosh. You put your Amiga 1200 in the 500 case. Well, that is... Um, some next level um, um, modification, isn't it? <laughs> I never did that. To start with, my Amiga 1200 CD-ROM drive sat outside of the case, as you know, like in an external case. It was connected to um, SCSI through that little gap that it has on the far side near the joystick and mouse ports. That was pretty nice, actually. I mean, it was a bit ungainly, but you know, it was much better than. The tower that I ended up putting it in, so but because I'd by that point um, got a uh, an 040 also for the Amiga and eventually a Blizzard PPC, it was um, the cooling was also a bit of an issue, so it wasn't entirely without reasons to um, so uh, to um, tidy me. So I'm just going to draw roughly the th the hand in. So the way that I generally do this to start with is to just draw it as sort of polygons almost. So that way I get the general shape of what I'm going to be drawing in, like so. There'll also be a little thumb sticking out here, so. And the trick to drawing hands, although as I said at the very start of the stream, I do still to this day struggle drawing hands at difficult is uh just to look at your own hands as you're drawing that's that's usually the best thing um that will tell you what you need to know but the trick is obviously being able to um see it from the other direction so take a little hand selfie i guess that's a good trick these days i use that there we go Your Amiga 6 is too big for its case. Oh, wow. But this is my... Um, uh, I'm not sure if yours is as well, but this is my or original um, Amiga 600 that I bought um, back in the, uh, the 90s, in 1993. Um, obviously, sadly, my grandfather or granddad, I never called him grandfather, it's a bit bit posh um <laughs> passed away and left me a little bit of money and i had a a, a few savings and um i was able to purchase uh, an amiga 600 which silica recently reduced down to 189 pounds and uh yeah the rest as they say is history Um, so because this is my childhood Amiga 600, I've, I'm very attached to it as it is, so, so yeah, this arm may actually require more room, um, you painted it blue with a CD TV keyboard with a nice black keys, <laughs> it was 20, don't worry, Anne, it's different times, isn't it, we all did things, um, all those years ago that we wouldn't do in a million years now. Um, you know, like for example, I sold an Amiga 3000 for £125. So, um, you know, I sold all sorts of things, a Blizzard PPC for about the same kind of money because the Amiga 1200 actually died. I had uh, ruined it so much that it just died a death. Um, you know, we all did things that we with the power of hindsight we now regret, but well, that's just the way it is, isn't it? You know? No point worrying about it. It's, you know, as uh, long as you know what you want to do from now onwards with your stuff and 
whatever it it doesn't matter if if you've modded it really it's not for anybody else to say oh you shouldn't mod it but for me i before i put everything in the check mark case i was very much like well if this was my new mega 500 it wouldn't be going in here so right i'm gonna have to move this because i'm actually running out of room here um because i just need to make that hand a bit wider so what we need to do is actually unlock the background now which is fine because these different colours of outlines are actually going to be separatable with the use of stencils, so that's not a problem. So, okay, it gives me that bit more room. Um, but the scale is, is pretty much spot on at the moment, so that's good. I'd say the scale is actually the hardest thing to um, judge with pixel art. It's very different to drawing on paper. Uh, there is a certain freedom with... Um, just lock the background again now there is this oh actually just before i do <laughs> background free just want to get rid of some of these orange marks um there is a freedom from drawing on paper that you just don't get um with pixel art and that's the hardest thing to get used to but once you crack that you're well on your way But yes, uh, I, I guess that you know in these enlightened times we wouldn't be necessarily butchering, butchering CDTV keyboards and stuff like that. So, um, you sold your Amiga twelve hundred tower Amiga F Dude Fury A six hundred rolls off the tongue. <laughs> but cool name. You does what it says in the, the, the tin. You like Amiga. You're a dude. You have an Amiga six hundred. That's a Fury. Um, but yeah, you sold your Amiga 1200T with a PPC and Blizzard Vision. Wow, I didn't have a Blizzard Vision. I had the Ateo bus for 200 quid. The smell of regret hangs heavy in the air, I would suggest, with that one. But we all did it. We all did it. There was a point where, you know, it was, it's, it, well, it was clear as day that the Amiga was well, done for, you know, to get some... <sighs> I don't like saying this obviously, but real world work done. We had to uh, move to using PCs and modern Macs and stuff. Um, I did, um, which I couldn't hold out any longer really. The Amiga 1200 dime was more coincidental to me getting an actual real Macintosh than anything really. Um, sad day though it was. Um, yeah, but there were different times, weren't there? I mean, we're talking 20 years ago in my case, so. And uh, yeah, okay. So this is looking quite good. Quite happy with this so far. Um, I'm gonna change some of the lines here. Uh, I'm gonna free the background now. Actually, I don't think it needs to be locked. Okay, like so. good so the proportions do look a little bit wider on this pixel art drawing even though i can't actually see that there are vast differences uh between the pixel art and the actual drawing it's a bit bizarre i know that amiga pixels aren't square so things do tend to look a bit wider uh but i don't actually dislike it <laughs> bizarrely hey jelly arts how you doing hope you're well nice to see another new name in the chat so yeah, so uh, tell us all about what your interest in artwork or Amigas or pixel art might be, or, or even uh, Lamma um, uh, one half. Um, you never quite know uh, with these streams whether people are joining because they like retro computing or retro gaming or whether they like um, manga or, or what. So always good to hear. Uh, what's drawing new people into the chat? So hey, hope you enjoy your stay. So because the perspective looks a little bit wider on what I've sketched here, and I'm not quite sure why. I think there's a bit of torso shortening going on as well, which is partly responsible. But the perspective, uh, I'm not disinclined with at the moment but uh, I need to make sure that these knees don't suffer as a consequence 
um, because that was one bit that my first sketch this the other night did get wrong and and it did look weird um, so so I'm just gonna make sure that this doesn't suffer the same fate because it may look fine but it's only when you come away from it and look at it afterwards that in the cold light of day you think nah that doesn't work <laughs> Wow, that's a really, really seriously modded Amiga 600 you got there, Amiga dude. Um, mine's very unmodded for all the reasons that we've probably been talking about, um, but most particularly because obviously, like I say, this is my childhood uh, Amiga 600, and I don't want to um, change anything about it. Really, it's it. Well, when I say that, that's that that is. Um, mostly all a lie because it has been modified to some extent. Um, you know, it's got a compact flash card in here now for the hard disk. It's it's got two mega chip RAM now, um, which I could have sworn I had back in the day. But when I fished this back out in the loft at the end of end of last year, the start of last year, you had a choice of two words there, Vicky, and you went for the wrong one. Um, and uh, I could have sworn there was a, a, a mega amount of chip ram in it, but maybe that too got bizarrely sold, or maybe uh, I'm just misremembering, which is actually probably very likely. So, um, but yeah, so that's one of the reasons that I'm not in in this to modify. Mine. Oh, and of course, it's also got uh, an extra couple of megabytes of um, RAM, fast RAM on on the PCM CIA, but that's it. Um, I won't ever be getting a um, Furia for this. It's I'm keeping it completely stock in that regard. Um, that's not to say that this Amiga Six Hundred hasn't ever had an accelerator in it, because back in the nineties, it had for a very short while a Apollo 630 card in it, which was utterly hopeless. Um, one of the most unreliable accelerators I'd, or pieces of kit in general that I'd ever had for an Amiga. It crashed all the time. Whether that was just from the socket not fitting properly, but Power Computing sent me two of them. Well, obviously, I sent one back and they sent me a replacement that had the same problem. Uh, or overheating. Um, yeah. Shame, really, because that would have given me an 030 25 um, with 32 megabytes of fast RAM, I seem to remember, on it. So, it wasn't to be, so my Amiga 600 didn't like it very much. <laughs> You've got your 4000 your PPC still, yeah, nice. That's well, that is a valuable piece of kit, so um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed having the PPC at the time because it did allow me to play Quake on my uh, Amiga 1200. Um, but overall, I'd say what use I got out of it was negligible because by that point in time, I was mostly using my Amiga as a Macintosh through emulation. I'm just going to draw that over there for the moment. And um, yeah, it it wasn't really being used much as an Amiga by that point. And if anything, the Blizzard PPC was a little bit of a down, down step actually for what I used my Amiga mostly for. Um, because it had a slower 040 on it then because I didn't have the 060 version of the Blizzard PPC I basically had the basic one uh, I think it was 160 megahertz 603 with an 04025 which was a bit of a step down from the Apollo 124040 that I used to have um, before that so a little bit of me regretted actually the Blizzard, Blizzard PPC um, 
So, because the Apollo card was actually quite good, certainly very fast for Macintosh. Basically, gave me quadra speed, so which was nice. Okay. So the back here is going to require a little bit of uh, work. Um, I think this is by no means going to be the final iteration of that particular part. But yeah, these days I'm not really that much into, despite the checkmate stream, but that was all about uh, getting back a 3,000 cell machine after one that I should never have sold. Um, I'm not really a hardware tinkerer, I'm much more at home doing what I'm doing here. Which is good. Yeah, exactly, the PPC was a little bit redundant in many respects, wasn't it, uh, Jan? Okay, so I'm just going to lock this background a moment because I just want to check some lines here. So the back is going to come down and then I want to make sure I'm getting this right relative to the proportions of what I am actually drawing here because there it is diverging a little bit from the um uh the original sketch which is fine but uh I've got to make sure that the proportions are good so I'll free that background again now I'm just going to turn on the stencil. Let's lock those. I'll just get rid of this bit of orange here. Okay, cool. Uh, that's looking good. I might be able to get away just making that just a little bit straighter, which gets me back on track with my sketch a bit. So there's an abundance of orange building up here, but this was the main bit that was not right on my first sketch of this that I did. Um, and I know how much that kind of broke the overall sketch um so that's why i'm paying particular attention to this i think because otherwise that would be a real shame Good. Undo that. Turn the stencil off now, I think. There we go. I might just turn it on again just to make sure that black outline is protected. You also have an A500 with a. As, oh, you got a Retina graphics card and you your Amiga 500. That's pretty cool. Nice. That's nice, yeah, and that's a nice twelve hundred to have. I've got an O uh, an O twenty except so the AC ACA twelve twenty one in my twelve hundred. Um, it's plenty enough for what I need. Um, just because it gives the extra RAM and it does speed up the Amiga quite considerably, actually. Um, which to use a phrase that I've been using all evening, which is nice. So I hope you've been, you're enjoying uh, tonight's stream. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to have this outline sorted out uh, very shortly. Um, maybe not including the hands, because um, those might take a bit longer, but we'll just see. Um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying the stream nonetheless. 
Um, I'm probably going to be finishing the stream in about 15 to 20 minutes. I've not got nearly as far as I thought I would, but there again, these things always take a little while, particularly when I'm streaming. It is always much quicker when I'm just drawing by myself, so. But obviously I don't want you to just be watching a silent stream, so. But we'll try and get uh, the character completely done, so. Should lock, keep that locked. I'm just going to erase some of these orange markings here now. There we go. Because we don't need those there anymore. Yeah, you got some nice stuff, you guys. So my stuff's much more basic. <laughs> okay, I think that's all right. Now I'm just going to switch back to the blue for the shoes. I'm just going to lock the background again. So the back of the heel is going to come out like so. Now, for some reason, earlier on, I found drawing the shoes, the actual position of the shoes. Um, one of the most tricky things to get right perspective-wise, and I, I don't quite know what was causing me those problems, but it was definitely presenting me some issues. That's, there's no doubt about it. Um, it just really did not look right. Um, so hopefully I don't have run into the same issues this evening transferring my sketch into um, an actual piece of pixel art um, but one thing I did find was that and this might be a little bit too soon to be doing this but actually putting the sole of the shoe on actually helped re you know sort of keep the perspective there because that was I think where it was getting a bit weird. There we go, that's roughly it. I mean, obviously, it's all going to be encountered by the shading, so. Yeah, let's just make the shoe just that little bit longer. There we go. You can see that locking in the background is really 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 essential so yeah if you've enjoyed the stream guys um it's always lovely if you drop a little like down if you are not subscribed and you want to see more stuff like this you know what to do but um yeah i'm led to believe that um the like button will determine whether this comes up when people google these oh, well, you know no i'm using google as a verb there to Google when people search on um, YouTube so um, okay that's not too bad I'm gonna actually bring this knee down a bit more because I think that's not quite right Okay, that's better. Oh, actually, background's still up, so let's unlock the background. And just quickly trace those back in again. There we are. Like so. Oh, thank you so much, Moishu. That's so kind of you. That's just so kind. Oh, thank you. Best live stream ever. Oh, wow. That's uh, some, some, some praise there. But yeah, this is what I love doing. This is what I do on my channel. Um, you know, live streaming. I do videos about the subject. I, I like passing on my knowledge about this. Um, 
I just really enjoy it, you know. And yes, it is all about the nostalgia. It's about creating new stuff now. It's that's that's a really super nice comment. Thank you so much. It sort of made my evening now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, heaven knows I'm enjoying it. So, so yeah. So eventually, this will all be coloured in and animated as well, which is going to be pretty cool. So. Thank you, Yan, as well. That's very kind. Yeah, I I just um just enjoy doing this stuff really. That's the bottom line. If you enjoy it, then you'll never stop doing it. I'm just gonna slightly adjust the eye there. It's just a little bit narrow for the perspective. But yeah, I'm going to be compiling what I've done here plus what I end up drawing separate outside of this video, which is basically finishing off this picture uh, into a little video, which will hopefully be at the uh, start of, uh, sorry, start of the end of this week. Right, I'm just going to lock the background again because I don't want to damage what I've got there and I just want to tidy up this bit with the shirts, which I'm going to change a little bit for my drawing because... I'm not sure that I got that quite right. Um, still, <laughs> and again, this is just a rough outline, so it's a little bit badly done. But, but yeah, my focus is very much on the creative side as well as the game side. I do stream games as well, but yeah, I enjoy live streaming pixel art and being creative. And I will eventually be doing some structured art stuff on Yamiga as well. Um, with Draw Studio and maybe a bit of Pro Vector. Oh, thank you, Moisey. You're very, very kind. <laughs> okay, cool. So, that's not too bad. Um, I just need to draw in bits of these ribbons here. Yeah, the, I mean, obviously, I'd love to finish this off tonight, but realistically, there is at least two hours more to go. And I don't want to rush this. Um, I want to take my time with it. I want to get it right, because um, it's going to be part of a a feature-length animation. Well, when I say feature, it's not going to be 90 minutes, but, you know, it's going to be a, a substantial enough animation, and I don't want to... Um, rush it um and um yeah but when you go on to my twitter if you if you're on twitter uh i post quite a lot of my stuff there about progress on pieces of artwork you'll see time lapses of stuff and all that kind of shenanigans um i think what i'm going to change here slightly is um, this hand position because it's just sitting a bit too low. There we go. Actually, I'm just going to split it a little bit here. But yeah, you'll see that I'm totally not scared of pulling apart things that I've drawn to improve the perspective I think you should embrace these digital tools just because you wouldn't do it on a or wouldn't be able to do it on a linked picture doesn't mean that you shouldn't embrace what the digital canvas allows you to do which is namely fix your wonky perspective in my case <laughs> And besides, these are very much a, a rough outline at the moment, so. That's a very good question, Jan, and uh, one with a uh, fairly straightforward answer. So Jan asked, but question, if you can draw those lovely, beautiful sketches on paper, as we've seen, why also do it then on a computer for the animation part? Is it just for the love of pixels? Um, it's actually for both of the latter points. I love animation. Um, I'm not a great animator. Uh, I don't think I will ever be a great animator, but 
I enjoy doing animation and I think the more I do it the better I'll get at doing it but I just really enjoy doing animations I can't do that with flat pieces of paper um, and in terms of um, you know like what why do this as pixels when you've got it on paper well yeah I do have to tell myself sometimes actually you should really just do this on paper and you know get your get your markers out and do this um, by hand um, because um, there's a lot to be said for that um, which there is you know like I don't want everything I do to be low resolution pixel art but ultimately I do love pixel art and that's why I do it it's it just harkens back to an era of when um, well this this was what um, you saw in games and stuff and it feels still even though we're going through a slight period of enlightenment about actually the virtues of pixel art we're not still stuck in those somewhat um, uh, ridiculous times that we found ourselves in in the, the mid to late 90s where 2d equals bad 3d equals always awesome I think we're living in slightly more enlightened times now thankfully as to actually what constitutes good and bad um, bad art whether 2d or 3d is bad art not not by virtue of it being um, 2d alone um, so um, so yeah I guess that it just reminds me of um, of those uh, great days that we've we all experienced of 2d pixel art and stuff being the predominant art forming games uh, occasionally you've got sort of vector based or polygon based stuff like um struggling to think of examples like robocop 3 on the amiga for example or what else did we have um another world slightly touched on it didn't it um that kind of thing but largely speaking um this is what computer graphics were, it was pixels, wasn't it? And um, so I, I just love it for that reason as well. Um, it's quite simple, really. Um, there is obviously modern ways that I could be doing my animation. I do want to investigate that actually in time, but this is what I do vaguely know about. Um, well, I do know about it. Let's not do myself completely down, but yeah. And also I get a little bit tired of the sometimes CG look too. And in some anime, particularly when it comes to background art, I I do worry about some of the production quality on stuff. Uh, I'm not a complete CG snob, as I say. I mean, I don't mind it in uh, in balance, but yeah, there there are limits, aren't there? So, so, and I guess that in some respects, bizarrely, pixel art reminds me of the more hand drawn computer art variant of digital art <laughs> of which this definitely is as I don't think you can get more hand drawn than somebody using a line tool um, and um, drawing each pixel at a time it's, I might do my work in slightly strange ways but it, it works for me and um, and actually it shows that you don't need really special tools to do it you just need time and patience and be willing to put the practice in I think more than anything hey there Jordy Muff lovely to see you so oh good I'm glad it made sense to hand so no worries Amiga do Fury lovely to see you uh, I hope to see you again in another stream and see you around so 3D what's that hey yeah yeah, we, we all miss them terribly, don't we, uh, Geordie Marv? So, thanks for joining me on the stream. Sorry I took ages to actually notice you there. I'm just in the zone, in the zone. So, I'm um, just busy drawing pixels. <laughs> so, yeah. No worries, Phil. You just slink off into the back there. Uh, it's a very... Uh, well, I didn't actually really announce the stream as such, did I? I just said, I think I'm going to do one today. And then I just basically said on Twitter, I'm live. <laughs> so, there was... But yeah, so um, I'd hope to be a bit further on than where I am. Um, but yeah, we're making decent progress. Uh, we've mostly got Lama Chan uh, completely 
inked now. I'm going to turn these myriad of colours into um, other bits and pieces shortly. Um, well, actually into proper um, black. Um, but yeah. Exactly, that's why I like it as well, Phil, is that sense of it's really been worked on. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong, there was some really shoddy pixel art back in the day as well. I mean, like, for example, that Castlevania game that I streamed, the Amiga version of, not not NES version, I love that, <laughs> the Amiga version of um, Castlevania. I mean, that's that's a classic case of somebody saying, oh, look, I've got all the colours and the fidelity, and I can make it look better by virtue of having more colours, and it's just like, no! No, you're missing the point, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's not like you know, pixel art equal always good, but you know, the same mantra goes for 3D, isn't it? 3D by dint of being 3D is not automatically better, and uh, yeah, and plus, I just think it looks gorgeous. I mean, it does, doesn't it? Um, when you look at a game with good 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 pixel art in it it's, it is it is a beautiful thing oh thanks Jordy that's nice yeah I've not been streaming a lot lately I, I was saying to start the stream just with getting everything sort of in line for getting applications in for the Japan stuff and all the rest of it I mean it's not until next year that that will be happening but there's so much to do obviously there's the application for a start <laughs> has to be worked on and yeah you know I've just, I've just got to um prioritize the output as it were so but uh I will still be doing streams but I think what I really learned from uh, the the Disney animation studio one that I did the other week is that actually going in with a bit more of a focus rather than hey let's do some fun streaming is which of course there's a place for that as well but I just felt that um that worked out really well and um you know, and actually maybe um, keeping a slightly tighter focus on things uh, it may help a little here and there. Obviously, game streams. I'm not going to plan those too much. <laughs> uh, should should hopefully be doing a game stream this Friday. All being well, but yeah, the amount of stream that I I uh, was doing, I I might have to just cut back on just whilst I'm. Busy with all the uh, Japan stuff, so okay. Well, this hand will need a little bit more work um, once it's all fully inked in, but yeah, it's all right. <laughs> oh, that looks a bit weird there. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? What you can do with pen doesn't always translate into pixels so I'm working from a sketch of mine here um, but it doesn't always necessarily translate in pixels so and obviously this isn't shaded yet so so let's let's not get too carried away here um, we'll leave that like so um, Right, one hand to do over here. Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it, Jan? It's very, um, uh, I think the word that I would use for uh, Dulux Paint is I find it quite soporific as well. Um, maybe it's just a gentle click of my Amiga's disk drive lulling me off into a sort of trance-like state. So, um, so just to reiterate for the guys that have just joined me, I'm actually recording this stream so that I can compile what I'm doing into an actual video, which will precede down what I'm doing. Because I do want to get back to doing some actual video content as well, not just streams. And um, obviously I've got the Japan Expo video out um, recently. That was no small accomplishment because that actually turned out to be more of a job editing than I thought. Um, but we got there. And um, so, yeah, it's. Um, I'm just going to clench my fist here, so. Like so, so we want to come down like this. Make sure I get the perspective right on this. Actually, the thumb needs to come this way. 
So again, as I was saying, actually the sketch probably isn't quite right here. So I'm doing this on the fly, drawing the hand. Always fun, considering how difficult hands can be to draw. So yes, I'm recording this, so usually you would obviously see me and everything, so... <laughs> now you're gone. <laughs> Cheers, Amiga dude. So, uh, but yeah, usually I you would see me and have all the embellishments around it. But I'm basically recording the stream in a different way to what I did the other week, which was basically to uh, run quick time recorder at the same time, which totally ground everything to a halt. So, so this time I'm um, what I'm actually doing is actually just recording it with OBS. But I didn't want all the embellishments around it, like all the frame, so because that would mean that I'd have to snip it out and that would reduce the overall image quality. So I thought better of doing it that way. So, and it seems that doing it this way has ensured that the uh, frame rate has kept up actually. So, which is good. Or to use the phrase uh, du jour, which is nice. Any excuse to slightly paraphrase uh, the far show has to be done. <laughs> So I'll just make this finger just a little bit looser. Okay. And then we've got the little pinky on the end, so. Which we'll just have coming down, I would say. Take that out there. And then we just need the ridge of the knuckles. Which I might just leave that one there, like say. What I also love about pixel art is, <laughs> is obviously it's the biggest, it's biggest frustration to people just starting out with it, is just um, how one single pixel can sometimes make make all the difference. <laughs> so fickle like that. And what you do in one part of your pixel art looks great in one place, but then you go and apply it to somewhere else and still doesn't look right. <laughs> okay. How well that will actually work in reality is another matter that a little indication of a um Uh, finger being slightly not quite so clenched in, so is anybody's guess, but we'll go with it anyway. And what I want to do is just hint if I can at the finger wrapping around and underneath. Obviously, I am drawing this off on the fly, so. And as I say, drawing hands can be notorious. Well, at least I find them difficult. You know, I'm, as you know, guys, I'm always happy to admit where I find things difficult. Um, you know, but then that's it's good to be open about these things. Other people give you good advice and stuff like that. But yeah, hands have always been tricky to draw for me. I've found. You know, like that's really not right at the moment. So, um, so the big thing is the thumb. Yeah, that's where this isn't working. And what we need to do is just move the hand out of the way a little bit, just a moment, and we're going to get that thumb right. <laughs> oh, thanks, Yan. Yeah, yeah. If you've enjoyed tonight's stream, guys, it's always nice to see that it's been appreciated through the likes. Uh, but also, it just helps. I think YouTube's algorithm to flash this up, um, doesn't it? To um, you know, when, when people search for stuff, I think is the main benefit of it, really, more than anything. Mm. We 
mean, obviously, some of this is only going to come in really when it's properly shaded as well. So best not to get too obsessed about it. But yeah, it does nag me when I look at the hand and I just think, oh, no. Just how to get that right with the fun there. I mean, do I actually want... Mm -hmm. No, you do you need to see it really, don't you? Let's just take that all away. I think what it is is sometimes when you see the um maybe I can get it so that Yeah. Maybe that would do it. So that the thumb is actually coming from underneath. And that would actually slightly cover up here, I think. Again, doing this, well, what you do when you create art and that you do it from memory, I suppose. Mm, no, it looked better without doing all of that. Um, Yeah, okay, so this this is gonna be a bit rough this hand to start with, but it's it's in the right ballpark. Um Yeah, so it really needs to show that this thing is tucked under. Better. Not quite there, but better. Maybe having the um, uneven finger, which is meant to be just slightly pointing out, is just not working. Maybe I should just make this a bit more uniform. There is no harm in trying something. Oh, I'm still working away, Error 42, so. Okay, I think the hand's quite good now. It just needs a little bit of work. This hand. We're going to be wrapping up shortly, though. <laughs> I haven't quite done as much as I thought I was going to do tonight. I thought I might actually finish this tonight, but um, I don't know where I got that idea from. <laughs> I might actually have it so that... Actually, what I'm going to do here, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Make sure I've got the actual arm length correct. Because what I was trying to do with having one finger slightly extended was to basically hint at what this otherwise rather strange arm position looks like. Because it almost looks like 
Lamar's arm is extending in the wrong way. But in fact it isn't, because usually when you make a fist, if your arm was slightly bent upwards, which is what this is suggesting, your fist would be upside down. But actually, in this instance, Lamar is actually making a bit of a claw. And so, and there's just a little bend in the, the elbow, really, is what I'm hinting at. Um, so, yeah, it almost looks a little bit contorted, uh, just straight on, so. Although the arm is slightly in the wrong place there. <laughs> so it definitely looks contorted. And for this, you really need to be out of the magnification just to see this in perspective for all the other stuff. Let's go with that. Always good to be optimistic. Yeah, none of us get the time estimation right. No. No. It never seems to be uh, my forte, that one. And then sometimes when I do guess accurately, I'm told, oh, that sounds a bit too long. <laughs> uh, that's not right either. Um, I was trying to get the bottom of the elbow there, but again, the, shade, the, the lack of shading is not helping us here, is it? So... I think actually this this bit here is just a little bit more as well. I don't want to deviate too much now because obviously earlier on I sketched out the correct uh, an approximation of exactly where the arm is extending from. It's a bad line. Okay, I think this arm's going to need a bit more work. Um, I don't think that's as good as it can be. Um, but that's okay. Awareness of what you need to um, work on is just as important as knowing how to fix it yourself or how to make it right. You know, it's, if you're not aware that there are problems with what you've drawn, then... Hey Tim, how you doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, I know, Hera 42 is kind of what I was referring to. <laughs> how long do you think it would take? Uh, 10 days. Oh, that sounds a bit long. 10 days later. Why is it taking so long? Uh, well, it's finished now. Huh. Why didn't it take five days? Because uh, it was a 10 day job. <laughs> so... Or worse still, how long would it take? 10 days, 20 days later. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> so. Okay, I think that's a bit better. I think I'm going to come back and perfect this arm separately as part of the video that I put together with what I've recorded from tonight's stream. Uh, that won't be a problem. Um, because it's just a little bit off at the minute, and um, yeah, just needs that little bit of extra work. Um, but it's it's certainly closer now, so and that's the main thing. So what I can now do is turn these orange and blue lines into black. Which I should be able to do that with just that. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, so I can tell now that it's in black, it makes it clear actually to what's wrong with the perspective a little. Um, it's bizarre that, isn't it? The, the um, I suppose the orange just softens, doesn't it? Yeah, very well, thanks, Tim. Very well. 
I'm going to be wrapping up the stream soonish. I keep on saying I'm going to be wrapping it up in five minutes, but half an hour later I'm still here, so. I guess I must be enjoying myself. Heavens above, somebody on a stream not shouting at their screen, enjoying himself. Yeah, and that arm is just not right. It's not got enough of a bend here. Okay, that's a bit rough and ready what I've just done there, but bear with, bear with. As you can see, I'm just being as uh, destructive as always. <laughs> if something ain't right, it ain't right. <laughs> And besides, the lines that I drew earlier on were only guesses, so... Well, not guesses, they're based obviously off of the, the sketch that I drew earlier on today, but... They still remain guesses when I actually transferred them onto the screen here, so... That's what we've got to sort out. Exactly. <laughs> and that's sometimes a bit of a problem, isn't it, in actually completing things? Error 42, I find. I find I've got so many pieces of pixel art that I've started, but um, a bit like Magnus Magnuson, I've started, so I haven't finished. <laughs> but then really worked, is it? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like Mastermind at all, is it, basically? It's what I was trying to say in a weird way. That looks better. So yes, this is going to eventually be shaded and animated. I'll show you where I got to with my animation so far in a moment. I did show it at the start of the stream, so those of you who've been here from near enough the beginning will go, oh, not this again. But I will show you that, and there's too much of a bend in the arm. But it will show you what this is actually going to go into. Better, but not, it's still not right. Um... I don't know why I'm struggling so much with this arm. It's, I mean, it's it's in black and white right in front of me on my sketch, and yet for some reason on the screen this is just taking a little bit more tweaking than usual. But it does happen, you know. Um, it does happen. As I say, I think the perspective of what I've Ah, now this is looking a bit more like it. I'm sure I had it there a minute. Mm. There really isn't that much of a bend in the arm on my sketch, so I don't know why this looks like the arm really is. Contorting the wrong wrong direction. Bizarre, isn't it? Could look right on paper, but not right on pixels. But maybe I've, maybe I'm going a bit snowblind looking at it. <laughs> Which can happen, to be fair. You know, you can look at something long enough and just need to take your eyes away from it for a moment. So, I wonder if I just move. Just a little along there. There we go, maybe there. Oh, 
like so. It is indeed, Tim. Yes, it's the beach sketch from earlier. So, and uh, we turn it into pixels now. So, yeah. I managed to finish that off just about in my uh, lunch hour, and I, uh, I was working at how it would all look and everything, so... <gasps> <laughs> Careful, folks. <laughs> Almost lost a picture there. Uh, that doesn't usually happen. There you go. Isn't it ironic? Everyone I was saying about undo disasters in D paint and I was gonna say I think we've only actually had one of those. Um I almost created one live on this very stream. But because of that I'm actually gonna save. <laughs> Cause otherwise I might just cry quite a bit. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. We need goals, not deadlines. I think that probably is it, isn't it? I think, actually. I think you're on the money there, Era 42. Goals, not deadlines. I like that. Since you're back, Era 42, I, you were saying about sort of brave and doing Japan and all this kind of stuff. And um, I was saying that it's, you know, it's not something that I'm finding a doddle to arrange and all the rest of it. I actually did pull out my notebook, which has been sat in my lap, actually, for the past. That's better as a nose as well. Um save that again um, uh, hour or two so I wrote down all the things that I felt after um, the weekend's course and um, well, there's so much to do still but um, I feel excited by what's going to happen hopefully I feel very positive interesting I said I feel I have a purpose again so I feel like I'm doing something that means something to me so uh, very basically I have something to look forward to so, which I, I always enjoy uh, doing these streams and everything, but um, they're not earning me any money and stuff. And uh, I, um, yeah, I, um, I, you know, obviously I, if I could do this and get paid for doing it, that'd be great. But um, I know we did work this out with my line earlier on, but I'm just actually going to tweak this because I think this is also contributing to the what looks to be the funny arm position so so yeah so it gives me something to look forward to let me just draw this in and I shall continue my uh, my list so these yeah these are things that I immediately wrote at the end of the course they're not all positive in that way energized um, feel that I feel concerned for those that I leave behind or oh could be leaving behind you know obviously it's not permanently I'm gonna be back but you know obviously I'm gonna miss them um, obviously they can fend for themselves but uh, you know um, for example my often done their traveling things so it's my turn um, <laughs> yeah, that suits me better that um, a sense of foreboding of what comes afterwards. Maybe I can explain that one. It's just like, well, what do I do afterwards? Because it's it's not going to be forever, I don't think. Um, I mean, you never know. But, um, but yeah, what do I do afterwards? You know, I still presumably won't be qualified to do what I enjoy in life, say. But who knows? But I think I've just got to park that and just not worry about it you know I spent my whole life worrying about what I'm gonna do with it and it's time just not to worry about it and just do something you know that you can enjoy so um Dave Paul Jones again nice to see another new name so less pixels is more in the case of Mega versus PC <laughs> it sure is in this case so yes it is yeah definitely that so uh, continue the rest Fear, yeah, just, just basic fear. I mean, who wouldn't have fear? Um, so this is quite an interesting one. I mean, there's been many things that I've done over in my life, and you know, I've I've done lots of things really. I mean, um, but I've always come back around to them again. So I think this one's slightly unfounded, but I think it it was quite honest for me to write this down. A fear that this is just another imagined calling 
uh, even though this feels very integral to me and what I always wanted. I genuinely have always wanted to do this, but there have been a few things that I've tried in time that, you know, uh, just me just hoping that something comes of it, um, particularly when it came to the photography side of things. I mean, I love photography as a whole, but I tried many things with that, which I thought, oh, yeah, this, this is going to be what I'm going to be able to do sort of on a more full-time basis. And yes, I did the wedding photography for a bit full time, and I probably still would be doing it full time if uh, there wasn't a bit of a downturn in the amount of bookings I was taking and stuff. Um, but there was other things that I tried in the photography that I thought, oh yeah, this this will be good, and turned out I really wasn't suited for that kind of photography at all. So that's interesting. That one, I think, didn't want to write it down, but I had to be honest with myself. Um, you know, I'm, I, I don't feel at all that I'm running away from anything, so so I don't think, you know, that does have any bearing. And also, this is quite another good one, is that there is nothing to stop me doing what I want to do right here, right now. Um, it comes back to that fear thing, doesn't it? So I can't just say that I'm going to put my life on hold until I finally get to Japan and I'm going to do all the things that I say I'm going to do over there, because then there'll be a reason not to do them there, like I'm tired or, you know, the language barrier or whatever it might be. They'll, they'll, they, you know, we're all very good at actually making excuses about things, aren't we? Like, oh, why we can't do something right here, right now? Um, I've generally been pretty good at conquering those myself, but even so, uh, I think it's important just to acknowledge that you know, sometimes we can put life on hold because we think it's, you know, you go somewhere else, it'll all be very different. So, you know, I, I think really on a practical basis, what I was referring to more than anything was actually more the sheer fact of like, you know, if I want to go off into the, and, and do some painting outdoors, go and do it now. Don't wait until you get to Japan kind of thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, an interesting one. Um I don't. I think this is probably me just being slightly obtuse, but I think there probably is a bit of a sen sentiment there. There is a difference between what who I want to be to what I want to do. So yeah, I think that's a slightly um, philosophical thought that I had there. But yeah, um, yeah. But then immediately underneath that, I've written, I'm happy with who I am. So I am absolutely happy with who I am. So there's, it's not that I, you know, don't get some satisfaction out of where I'm at now um, with, you know, what I'm doing and spending my time and all the rest of it. So that's, that's nice, I guess. Um, um, I'm not happy with what I do. Okay, so that's not with what I'm literally doing right this minute, but... Yeah, I mean, to spend... I'm I'm okay, actually, at the moment with what I'm doing. Um, but I can't spend the rest of my life doing it. You know, I'm not going to be doing uh, websites for another 30 years. Um, because there'll be something else then. Holographic fax machines or something. Who knows? <laughs> These things come around in circles, don't they? Um, but yeah. I think you get the point. So... So yeah, so some interesting thoughts there. Uh, I I felt the need to write down after doing that course because I came really pumped up from from that course. I really, really, really enjoyed it. So it's very hard to try new things. Uh, says Era for two most for most people. Yeah, absolutely, it really is, and it is for me too. It's far from easy to stick with what you know, so it is brave. I suppose it is brave, but I suppose it just comes down to a very simple fact that if you're tired of doing the same thing every day, or what feels like the same thing every day, and you feel like your time is better spent doing something else, but yet you continue to go back to do the same old, same old every day, then you can not really moan to yourself that things aren't changing, um, because quite literally you're not doing anything to change them. And we can all fall into that trap of feeling like there's something else to blame for this. There's somebody else to blame for this. And um, and really, the only person, the buck stops with you, really, isn't it? And it's, you know, if it's really that important, you're, you'd make that change, I guess. 
And I think we all get to those points because we change jobs every now and then and that kind of stuff. You know, we don't always stay in the same job forever. Um, well, at least I certainly haven't. <laughs> Far from it. Um, yeah. And yes, I will be liberating at the sign, Phil. <laughs> That'd be so cool, wouldn't it? Coming to my f my uh, apartment or whatever, wherever it is, and you walk in and instead of like a neon sign with uh, happy days or something like that written on it or sort of like YOLO or something like that, there's a giant honking Commodore Amiga neon sign, which would be very much me. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay, that's not too bad actually um i feel that i've gotten over the the weirdness with the arm um which is nice but yes as you say i thought you did some serious reflection yeah i mean I, i'm not gonna lie obviously i had did have a, myself a, a couple of beers after the course because it was a, a, a full-on weekend the first day was 9 a.m and i had to get up at half six uh, to get over to brighton it was nine o'clock through to 8 p.m at night and of course obviously i had to get the train home um, and so I wasn't actually back home here until probably um, about a quarter past nine, maybe half nine. I used to say that was a trip to the chip shop that night. Um, there was no way I was cooking that night. Um, but yeah, I basically um, had a couple of drinks after the Sunday um, was done with because it was reason to celebrate. And um, I just naturally get a little bit more in touch with my actual true feelings uh, when I've had a couple of drinks. Not too many drinks, though, because then I just lose all my bearings and then I don't really think anything of any real importance at all. Um, <laughs> so it feels profound at the time if I've had three or four drinks, but it usually turns out to be complete rubbish. So that's why I try and keep it to just the two. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm being honest, just being honest. It's like um if you if if you're one of these people who sort of wrote diaries or whatever when you was um a teenager or in your early twenties or something like that. And at the time it seems really deep and profound and then you, if you ever have the travesty of discovering one of these bits of toilet paper later in life you just see what a moaning, quizzling I could be when I was younger, you know, you know what, or pompous even, you know, you just think, well, that's just garbage, you know, you're trying to be all sort of um, aloof and, I don't know, um, complex in your vagueness, but actually it just kind of crosses a bit of an idiot, <laughs> so, and yes, I did come across things that I wrote in my early 20s. Uh, a few years ago, and I just thought, oh my god, what a load of old tripe. Um, but, yeah. I'm sure most of us have done it, so, at one point or another. But yeah, no, those genuinely were very heartfelt thoughts, because I wanted to... Because I was kind of bouncing after that course, I really was. I just felt really positive that, yes, I'm definitely on the right track of where I want to be going in life and um you know now I'm getting the the means to do this and um or at least I'm on the right track for what I want to do for the next couple of years and um you know and I just felt really excited by it and um and then when I sat down just to make a few notes I thought well this is also a chance for you to write down those fears as well because the thing that obviously tipped me over the edge was actually writing down uh, the things that um, have thus far prevented me from taking such a big leap as, you know, applying for these roles and stuff like that. And I wrote down all the reasons why I haven't been able to do it so far. Um, you know, and when I looked actually down at what I'd written as the, the stoppers or the blockers um, on why I've not done this before now, I realised that actually there was... None of those things are impossible to overcome. They could be difficult, some of them. None of them are, you know, impossible. So, yeah. So, yes, it's uh, it's been a, an interesting month or two. Hey, let's try the website.
yeah, the problem was indeed with the shoulder, Phil, you're right. And it was just the positioning, because this will look a bit strange to its shade, because as I say, it looks a bit strange that the arm has got a bend in it um, at the elbow when there is a fist. But as I say, when you actually picture, I'm going to just switch so you can see webcam full screen a moment. I'm just catching up in the chat now, guys, because I'm going to wrap the stream up shortly. Okay. So, if you think about it, I'm just going to sit back a bit. Usually when you make a fist, your arm is pretty straight. Or It's not something I have a great deal of personal experience with. It's not something I've ever done. I don't think I've ever punched anybody in my life. Um, and nor do I hope I ever do. But, um, but yeah, usually when you punch someone, you'll be like this if your arm's outstretched. And this is straight. But what this is, is actually sort of when... Um, Lamar's in sort of this uh, neck again state uh, with the cat foo kind of thing. So what's actually happening is that the thumb is sat underneath like so, and there's a bit of a, oh, and this is why I probably need to redraw the hands. It's actually more of a claw, and that's, you can see the arm is bent here, but it's drawn back a bit because she's uh, leaping, uh, uh, basically. And one of the arms is outstretched like this, and the other one's like this. So, so that's basically where it's coming from. So... And the original sketch is this, just in case it is on uh, my Twitter um, page if you want to look at it. So, but it was basically a redraw of an earlier sketch that I'd done at the end of last week. You can still see it's got pencil and stuff, but there's a few things wrong with it. Like, as I pointed out at the start of the stream, the, where the back goes into the behind is just completely wrong there. The knees are a bit off and so forth. Although... I quite like the way the arms were drawn back in that one, but I wanted to also try it just uh, because basically in the animation the arms are going to start drawn back like this, and then it's going to be the arms going to be all that arms going to go out. So yeah, thankfully you can't read your own handwriting, so he means that. Oh, good Phil, good good shout. So <laughs> one way to save that perishing embarrassment. So I hope you will try to wave sod. We're we. Uh, what's the time now? It's almost 11 o'clock. I said about an hour ago that I was going to be wrapping up the stream in five minutes, so I haven't done it yet. So, nice pick. Thanks. Yeah, obviously landmark. <laughs> so, neck again state. So, um, yeah. So, I'll just show you where we've basically got to, which but is here. Um, so, let's save this. Uh, we'll save. Uh, oh, no, I don't. Uh, do I do? No, I'm going to put final after that, actually. So, so I've actually saved my outline progress on this one, which is unusual, because usually I just overwrite and overwrite and overwrite. So, yes. Um, stray pixel there. Oop. Up one. There you go. That's it. So, yeah. So, this will obviously be all animated eventually. So, those hands, will the things will change position and all sorts. So, so this will obviously all be coloured in as well and anti-aliased and all the usual gubbins. Uh, well, hopefully it'll be anti-aliased, but obviously with animation as well, that's uh, quite a bit to do. But hopefully we'll get to that. I wonder how this will look just out of interest. Yeah, quite good. Um, I mean, ordinarily I'd wait until I'm going to do the uh, actual anti-aliasing, but oh well. And uh, Rumiko Takahashi, she never really left... The um, the eyebrow arch in which is below the hair. Some some manga artists in there. It's a stylistic trait that they leave those in, but Rumiko didn't. She's not one of those. So so we will respect that. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's looking. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm actually just going to narrow this bottom quiver of the underside of the eye. Where were we before? Just out of interest there. Let's come in one pixel. There we go. Save. Yes. So it's all good. What well, is needed something to make copies with a different name in the background each time you say, yeah, I suppose you could do that with an AREX script, actually, Error 42, thinking about it. Um, D-Paint 5 does have uh, an AREX port, so maybe I should investigate that um, in a video sometime. But the problem is, is that only D-Paint um, 
only depaint um, five has that AREX interface, but there's nothing to stop you. Uh, I, suppose, I, suppose, no, I suppose there might be a third party thing to do scheduled tasks on an Amiga. I don't. You might be able to do it for a commodity if you custom built a commodity, perhaps. But um, yeah, but certainly a, a, an AREX script would otherwise be able to handle all that kind of thing but it's a good idea actually i might might investigate that actually error 42 if you don't mind me pinching your idea and i have shown some practical use of it obviously personal paint has a arex interface as well so that'll get around it So, try to be sort some nice comments here. Thanks. So, before anime really started to take off, I think Western developers didn't think we'd like anime style characters. Yeah, but this is the problem, wasn't it? Like, and then you continue. Landmark was a casualist in the SNES game. I had all the lovely graphics, really crappy new ones were put in place. It was named Street Compact. Oh, yeah, that's that was dreadful, wasn't it? I think that only came out in the States, though, that version. Um, it's the one before Hard Battle, wasn't it? And that was crap. Um, I have no idea. I mean, obviously, anime took a little while to get gain traction here in the West, but yeah, I totally know what you mean. It's awful. So, um, but Hard Battle was better. The PC Engine games were better. I mean, the first Landmark One Half game was a bit, bit rigid and a bit, but the cutscenes and everything about it was quite nice, though. And there was also, and I've actually downloaded it. <clears throat> uh, now for my SNES classic, the Landmark One Half. Um, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but it's something of the Red Cat or something. The Mystery of the Red Cat, or some 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 title like that, isn't there? Which is uh, English fan translation, which I started playing the other week. Actually, a little bit slow going, but actually it looks quite good. Doesn't have any nice cutscenes so far, though. Yeah, the redrawn sprites and that were terrible, weren't they? On that um, Street Combat, it was pants, wasn't it? I think um, I've got the um, PlayStation Battle Renaissance game, which, albeit it's 3D, isn't too bad. It's not my favourite because obviously it would have been absolutely epic if it was um, 2D, but alas, it's not. Um, yeah, which is which is a shame. Um, but it plays quite well. Um, and Genma as a panda looks quite good in it. <laughs> I can't help but think of Genma now as a panda basically saying, no, he's not going to go into the haunted school. <laughs> so funny. That always sticks out in me, that bit where basically soon is trying to uh, convince uh, Genma that, uh, uh, to basically that they will go to the school and do the ghost hunt. This is in the anime and so forth. And uh, and uh, Genma is so scared of it in reality that he's just like it turns himself into a panda and uh, or into the panda rather not a panda and uh, just rolls around on the floor. Bar, 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 bar. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I think I know a bit too much about this anime. Um, <laughs> so. But yes, I am going to animate it, so yeah. And I will show you where I've got with some of my animations so far, actually. So so this is going to be saved. Because I'm just fiddling now with this. And I'll show you where I've got with some of my animations so far. Um, so let's come down here. Oh, wrong folder. Do, 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 do. The reason that this is full screen, just remind yourself, guys, I'm recording this so that I can pray see what I'm doing in these videos down into a new video. It's a way of two, killing uh, two birds with one stone. So, um, there it is. Let's just find outline six. Right, I'm just going to open up. I'll just do some D-Paint 3. It'll take a little less RAM. No, but it doesn't like doing that. It's known, of course. I don't know what it is, but D Paint 3 doesn't like drag and drop file name loading. Right. So, this is what I've managed to do so far. Uh, there's a lot to do yet. <laughs> and obviously, there's lots of bits and pieces to be patched in here all the colouring and so forth, the background and so forth. So, I'll be busy, but it's, it's coming together. So, let's set the frame rates. Um. Right, 12 frames per second. And so, yeah. 
So this is where I've got to so far. And it will just loop back around to basically that point of shock. So, so yeah. So yeah, some of the bits will be full screen like this. Um, got lots to do so far. Um, but yeah, it's really the actual kernel of what's happening to Lamar here is 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 spot on. So, so yeah. So various things are going to happen. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So once it's all shaded and everything and the background's in there, it'll look nice. So and it will go well with, um, because basically I'm going to draw bits of background art which match up that other piece that I did the speed draw. Or uh, We did some of it, um, some character art over the top of it in a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, but um, basically, um, where am I going with this? I put the speed draw of the actual background art that I drew because I did that off stream. I just wanted to do that by myself um, a couple of weeks ago. Well, no, it was last week on Twitter I posted that. I think it became my most popular tweet so far, actually. I think um, um, about 130 people liked that, which was amazing. Um, so basically those colours um, will be used to form the basis of the backgrounds. So I don't want to spoil basically what I'm going to do in this animation, but um, if any of you guys are going to be at Swag... Um, and obviously you might see a bit more progress there but the idea is that obviously you get all of the uh, pencil or the, the outlines done to start with and then um and then it's going to go from there so but yeah the the actual animation itself is um it's it's fairly unsophisticated in many respects because there's like some paused frames here now i could use Deluxe paints five's ability to uh reduce the frame rate to virtually nothing to save memory but to be honest with you these duplicate frames don't really take up much more memory at all like because it's all run length encoded and um compressed anim it will basically only store the differences between the frames so there's virtually no no file size or memory implications for duplicate frames um so yeah so it's a little bit superfluous so but then as basically the expression of surprise begins to descend into sort of like rage or anger the mouth first closes up a little bit and then the eyebrows start to shift and then the arms will come out so that remonstrating kind of things so so yeah oh, yeah so you can see the eyebrows coming down and then the eyes begin to close and i do need to get it so the eyebrows cinch down just a little bit further and then they flash back open again ah! <laughs> oh lama lama <laughs> so Oh, awesome, try to wave. So that's so cool. I'm so glad that you got your Mika 600 out and you've got D-Paint on there. That's brilliant. And D-Paint 4.1. Now, that is a nice version. I'm using D-Paint AGA because that's what I have to hand, but I do have the 4.0 version as well. Um, ultimately, there aren't a huge amount of differences between 4.1 and 4.5 for Deluxe Paint AGA, as you've probably seen in my uh, long D-Paint video that I did. Um... I mean, there's a few subtle differences, but 4.1's really good, so. And yes, like you said, the onion skinning is brilliant on um, Disney Animation Studio. That's basically what I use it for, so. Is there a quick way for to copy the uh, main image from frame to frame? So, generally speaking, I won't do this. I won't construct the anim you know, this part of the animation in Deluxe Paint generally. Not always. Sometimes I dive into Deluxe Paint. Generally, I draw the initial frame um, in Deluxe Paint, like I did with what we've got over here. There we go. That that will be um, drawn in Deluxe Paint as exactly as I have done this evening. Um, but um, generally speaking, um, I will make the changes in... Um, um disney animation studio that kind of stuff um and um because that just makes sense really um and then um and then i bring it in uh, then basically i construct all the frames in disney animation studio because i can quickly show you here um as I, i'm sure you found this already actually the true snow and tried away um but just, just for completeness sake, if I come in here. Yeah, I love how... Um, Amiga makes it efficient as well, Ever 42, doesn't it just? Um, 
Oh, D Paint Five crashes on your Mega Six Hundred. Oh, that's that's interesting. Is do you think that's because of RAM though? Do you just only have two meg of RAM, or do you have a bit of extra fast memory? So what you've got. Um, so this is this is going to be the best bit of pixel art I've ever drawn. Um, there we go. Look at that. Um, what you do have uh, with Disney Animation Studio is that you can just copy here. So if you click copy, you don't have to cut as a brush even. I don't know why I just let the brush tool. Then you can paste down um, and then make any changes that you want. So um, yeah, so you, you can quickly copy frames like that with Disney Animation Studio. So that works quite well, I find. So then you can export it as an anim. So Yeah, I find DP5 really does need about four mega of RAM. You know, two mega chip is great with it, and um, two mega fast RAM goes a long way with it. So I think it will just about squeak by on two mega RAM. But the problem is, once your Amiga's booted into Workbench, uh, RAM's already at a bit of a premium by then. So yeah. Well, there we go. Um, I think that's where I'm going to leave it tonight, guys. It's now gone eleven. It's time for me to get some sleep, um, or at least sit in bed and read some manga. <laughs> I can stop the recording now, so that's all good. I hope you found that interesting. Um, so I am here, I am here. So just to reinforce it, that's the sketch I was working from. And actually, I could just um, uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. So that's. Can I do like for like comparison? Yeah. I'd say that's gone pretty well. I'd say that on the Amiga, but bear in mind, the Amiga doesn't have square pixels. It does look a little bit wider. So I think basically when that comes down to looking on a pure uh, one, you know, sort of square pixel machine, like a modern day machine or Amiga or an RTG, that will, um, that will probably actually be about right. Um, but yeah. I don't think you can say that they look completely wrong. Your Amiga 632 gig hard. Okay, so basically you've got a more uh, more um, pumped Amiga 600 me. So that's strange it doesn't work. But to be fair though, I am i don't know whether you've got the original version of D-Paint 5. I do. I know there is that cracked version that drifts around. So I don't know whether... That, whether because that one says it's D-Paint 5.2. But I don't think there ever was a D-Paint 5.2. I think that's just a hacked binary. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I hope you found it useful, guys. Um, you've obviously got more fast RAM than I have tried to wave sod, so. Um, but if you want any help on that, just drop me a line on Twitter as always, so. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will be back with a video that compiles basically how this all eventually comes together in full. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's all gone, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, obviously I can bring that up a bit bigger here. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks, it's looking good. So this will evolve into, like I say, a little video. It will be animated eventually as part of the bits and pieces that I'm working on. I don't anticipate finishing that animation until January of next year. Just being realistic with everything I've got going on, to be honest with you. So, oh, got a bit of a sore back. Um, so, um, yeah, that might be the issue. Possibly it might be trying to whip on. Who could say? So, um, but yeah, so if you've enjoyed tonight's stream, um, well, it's always lovely if you leave a little like on the video, um, but otherwise there's there's no, you don't have to, it's not essential, um, but I've really enjoyed doing this tonight, so um, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your evening guys, thank you so much for joining me, it's been a pleasure as always, some lovely chat, so thank you so much for trying to resolve, Amiga Workbench, Error 42, Phil, um, I'm not sure who else might still be in the chat, I think that's pretty much everybody now isn't it, so uh, Dave Paul Jones, if you're still there. Tim, I'm not sure if you're still there. Geordie Marv, you may be still there. Who knows? But uh, and Jan as well. Um, but um, yeah, 
I've um, really enjoyed your company, guys, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your evening. There will hopefully be a game stream this Friday. Uh, probably going to do some PC Engine stuff, actually. Uh, maybe some SNES stuff as well. I haven't done that for a while, so. Um, so, yeah, probably not so much Amiga stuff on the game stream this week, but um, that will be happening. Uh, but otherwise, we'll have the video out um, sometime later this week, hopefully, because I'm hoping to finish this little particular drawing off to show off, like, drawing tips. And, um, yeah. Guess what the rest of me to say is, see you soon. Peace. <laughs>